Alright, hey guys, it's Fitz here. It's been like a day or two since I've cast it last, and it's just because school is done now, and that means pretty good stuff for you guys. That means more content for sure, and more reps. So let's actually go finish Clan League within the next couple days, guys. I want to get this over with. I want to get you guys as much content as possible. Uh, let's see if I can actually just avoid friends and every other outside thing I can for the next four days. I don't have work till Saturday. I have a wedding on Friday, and I say T scores upon Thursday. So I really don't have anything until Thursday. It is Monday at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So without further ado, let's get in this cast now, guys. We did go into, I believe, what was the uh, series we were going to last week, or two days ago, excuse me. We were in week 5, and we are Division B1 between Black Dragon and, uh, I want to remember what their names are, something... Salvation Army, that's what it says. Clan League, Clan, Clan League Week 5, Division, Clan League Week 5, Black Dragons, versus Salvation Army. Now, of course, you know, uh, these play, these clans aren't really well known in Brood War, they're probably just pick up teams on iCup, so there really isn't much to talk about them, other than that there's just a group of friends, or what have you, a group, a clan, a practice buddy group that's just playing for clan league you know just a group of fun that's what brood words kind of come into it's kind of more of like a family esport in its own right uh, you know you still have the higher re higher league foreign teams but you know you just want to keep that in mind so these aren't going to be super high level games i mean they will have good players in them but i just want to make sure that you're not you're not you're not tuning into like you know ipl or I mean, the, um isl excuse me but anyway we did get between game bb blade and bronza so i believe if I remember correctly, Blade did lose. If I if I just I want to remember correctly. Next map will be on Fighting Spirit, guys. Uh, pretty standard map. Um, well, let's just hop right into this because I want to get this cast underway, get this content out to you guys because that's what I do. I am fit with a whole bunch of free time, and apparently I have an update the overlay. But we'll see how this is gonna go down. Spotting in the bottom right, it'll be Black Dragon's Blade here, who's been notorious for going. Uh, DTs, but we haven't seen it as much as I'd like to see it from last game, if I remember correctly. He probably should have gone DTs in the end. But yeah, so it's funny in the bottom left, it will be the uh, will be Salvation Army's Bro Bro Brozoa here, who I believe did pick up a win last game. Let's go check this out. I, I will double check this, guys. Please uh, familiarize myself if you guys are watching the YouTube VODs, as I will upload those sooner or later. And Blade's going to be born to the game, so... Um, now, these players, I don't know, I mean, I don't really know much too much about them, so we'll just have to go play by play on these guys, and yeah, looks like Pylon first, something out of, two, out of the ordinary, so yeah, pretty much what's been laid is just like school, and I've done pretty, pretty well, I ended with a honor roll, so can't complain for that much, and you know, really can't complain, looks like a four stop fan coming out of the blade here, nothing out of the ordinary, really, any kind of uh, cheese coming out of him right now, Overlord will be scouting the run, uh, position on this map so far so now what are you guys doing nowadays are you guys like watching any interesting TV shows or anything like that because I'd like to know because I have 90 days to do whatever the hell I want to do this other than Starcraft related I have I'm pretty much all in full Starcraft mode right now but I really wouldn't mind watching a TV show please comment below if you do have an interesting TV show to uh, to uh, suggest to me be very very interesting to do so that will be a two gate actually and uh, that will not be a tight wall of FYI and gonna be doing some aggression with cross positions on fighting spear now you can do it on this map you know this map is not is not known to be cheesy but you can do it you can catch your opponent off guard especially one that is going I believe 12 no it looks like a 9 pool into 12 hatch or uh, 12 pool, 11 hatch, whatever you guys really want to call it, whatever the actual supply isn't really necessary to really get into, but the fact of the matter that pool became up first, so there will be links to deal with this. I'm not sure if if we saw Brazil actually scout this now, now keeping that in mind. So Now, we're still not really seeing, I mean, okay, Zell's going to be making the way over here. Now, Blade will probably be liking this right now, because... Blade, because we did see an, a fast pin, which will definitely make Bruzo a little bit more susceptible to any kind of early game 
pressure, but I mean, with that, with that, the addition of the pool in the mix there, it's definitely gonna make it a lot more different to do that. Now, uh, what are here we go? Uh, a lot of lings are gonna make their way up here. We'll be trying to intercept any kind of over, um, zealots here. Now they can get a good surround on them, and that's gonna have to push us this push back right here. But we'll see if the continued aggression is gonna be going on right here. Zealots are very, very strong against lings, especially when two of them are with each other, so the, uh, the Lynx cannot get a complete surround on that. Two more Zealots are going to be making their way down here. Uh, it looks like he's going to be committing to this very, very... going to be continuing to commit to this, and could do some a, a lot of aggression to this. Hatchery is done, though, so it will not have... which means we may have to push back away from it, depending on how the uh, engagement goes here. Now, there are no Lynx really coming out of Brazil in the general map area, so they're going to have to do something. Uh, two uh, Kukongs have gone down right here. We're starting to target fire. The Zealots, the Zealots, I mean... Brazil Lings are going to be getting a surround on that, um, which probably was all enough for enough time to get these. Some of your ones don't have fallen down so far. And um, the Skip Gate is probably going to get deflected off of right here. One Zealot is uh, passive right here. And this one is going to have to push back here. Once so those Suggins get off, there's really no way he can really engage that. Now, now, the interesting part is that because Blade went with this follow up, what can he do? He can try to, you know. Re go try to stabilize and go take an expand here, which is more than which is more than fine. But you know, now we see this expand did not get punished for taking a fast expanding staff, and you know, part of the reason is this cross positions on fighting spirit, and uh, you know, oftentimes you try to do some aggression here. But it, it's nice, it's nice to see a little mix of, of this coming from Blade here. You know, just you know, changing it up a little bit here. We're gonna be seeing a forward follow up with this, so gotta be trying to get a couple cans here. I think it'll be okay as long as he can plug in the holes here. He's more than enough zealous to deal with any kind of lane pressure. As long as he walls off, keep in mind. But uh, it, now, what are we seeing from Blizzard here? Are we seeing speed? Gas is starting to be uh, just starting to op be optimized around the four, four minutes thirty second mark right here. Getting on down a macro hatch, so maybe ultra ling right here. As there doesn't seem to be any kind of. Well, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be hard. I mean, he he might be able to drone up pretty hard right here. Is that what he's doing? It looks like uh, he supply blocked um, two of these are overlords right here, and lanes are gonna be trying to make their way in here. But Blade will be being able to plug in the holes, like I said, with uh, Zels, and he's gonna have a, a cannon or two by the time that that happens. But yeah, he's gonna be droning up behind this, so we'll be interested in what he decides to bring this gas into. He could go for a lair, but I, my, my my better guess is probably gonna go ultra lane pressure, maybe with plus one potentially. But we'll see how the follow-up's gonna be. We'll see if that's gonna be quickly turned into a lair, which is probably gonna be the choice, but yeah, it's gonna be definitely a lair. But you know, I I mean again, I mean I'm a lower league player, so I I predict Ultra Link. You know, just because with the macro hatch, but we could just be in three three hatch beat up, which probably could be more than applicable. They're going down the emo chamber, so gonna be getting upgrades, so maybe even Lurker, but I don't know. I mean Lurker in, in Z V P not terrible, but I mean Dragoons aren't pretty good against Lurkers in general, so I really wouldn't I, I wouldn't put it behind Lurker. But it, with that, with the addition of the Evo Chamber, it's going to be interesting what he's going for entirely. Because, I mean, are we going to see a standard follow-up coming out of Blade here? We'll be seeing a Stargate. Um, Cybercore is going to be done. So that, you know, the Evo Chamber is a little, uh, little earlier up. But yeah, he's getting plus one Carapace for Ling or Hydra or what have you. Um, and, you know, of course, probably get up the, you know, getting up Spore Colonies eventually when the Corsair come out. But, you know, Corsair won't be out for a bit standard time, probably for another minute and a half or so, just because... We saw two game pressure that really didn't too much. Now, Brozoa is going to be an interesting scenario here. Now, can he punish, you know, Blade for going to two gate? It's going to be hard because, I mean, did he did Brozoa really take any economic damage? No, not really. You know, traded armies with a couple of lings and stuff. You know, made him you know mess up maybe a couple of timings, but did it equal out? May, I think it may have because I mean, just looking at at, at where where everything stands right now. All the tech looks about normal standard ZVP action, and we're gonna be seeing a, a three. Uh, well, actually, we're seeing the Beetleus here, or Spire coming up eventually to deal with the uh, you know, Star Stargate. Now, the one issue that I have though is that he's getting Mutalisks, or um, I mean, he's getting Citadel. So, are we seeing Templar Archives follow up with this uh, potentially? Now. The one issue that we might be seeing coming to Brazoria here is he might be thinking, you know, Stargate anyway. But I'll be interested with the follow-up is he's still continuing on drawing up pretty hard. He does have the third at the nine o'clock, uh, about two thirds of the way done here. And I'll be interested how that's going to play out right now. But yeah, come, uh, that's going to be a handful of Zelts going to be making way there, down in the natural here. Uh, two, you do have a nice Sim City right here, but it's prone to uh, you know twelve Zelts with plus one. 
if he did get that upgrade, I'm not sure if he did actually end up getting it. Ah, ah about two thirds of the way down here. But yeah, he's gonna be easily be able to deny the third here, which actually somehow Blade's actually coming out pretty strong ahead, even with that 2k pressure. And that ba that third base should be going down very, very shortly. We'll be seeing um, a lot of late coming from Rosoi here. We'll be able to clean up here, and he's got a good surround on that, but he's not getting around the Zealot here, which is kind of needs to do right here. And I think this third's more than likely to be falling down. Now, what will be the follow up? Are we seeing any additional tech coming out of the Hydrogen? We are not. Uh, and are these gonna be Meatless coming out? Doesn't look like that. More Lings are on the way here. Uh, a lot of Lings actually are dying. I mean, a lot of Zealots are actually dying here. Not really big at the third here, which I'm somewhat surprised by, but, uh, even Carapace is not even done, and he has plus one, uh, or about to. Uh, he did have plus one kick, and that's probably the main reason why he wasn't able to do that, so, you know, crucial, crucial upgrade, and that's why you want to go for a Forge Facet fan, while you get that plus one very, very early. Citadel roll is done. He does have speed. He does have Templar Archives. Now, are we going to be seeing the Hydra fall off, or are we going to be seeing Mutalists here? Now, Mutalists can do a very, very good job against Protoss on this map, in my opinion, because, well, I mean, it's going to be pretty hard to deal with. I mean, you, uh, how many Dragoons can you really put back here? I mean, you can put down a handful of cannons, but, I mean, Mutalists can get a critical mass number of them. They're going to be okay. Uh, now, I, saw, I thought I saw an upgrade coming out, maybe Overlord Speed off one of these things. I thought I saw something, but maybe not. Uh, plus two characters is starting, I think, um, or to do with it getting an air, air upgrade. No, no, I, I, I take that back. Um, I don't know exactly what I saw. I apologize what I was actually seeing right there, but... Yeah, Meatless will be fl uh, flocking their way across the map right here. Will they be able to do any kind of guaranteed damage here? Uh, cams are going to be up, so Blade's going to be okay for the time being here, I think. But, I mean, the natural is definitely going to be a little bit harder to poke in, but um, the main is definitely more fragile, but that is a lot of cams coming in. So, uh, this Meatless has for us is going to be deflected, you know, fairly I mean, simply. I mean, until he gets Dragoons up or Archon, which is going to be morphing in very, very shortly here. Now, does he have Storm? He probably will get up Storm, you know, anyway. Storm has just started, actually, so Blade being a little bit more of a, of a standard Storm timing. Um... Probably would have it earlier if he didn't go for a two gate. Uh, we'll be saying Evans Elves to the third base right here. We'll be able to kill off this ha uh, this pumpkin right here. That will be uh, majority of the question here. Then that means uh, the hatching gun is completely exposed here, and he should just target fire it on the hatch. He's already weakened as it stands here. We'll be transferring drones over here at the same time here. Needles Thrass seems to be deflected at the main base of Blade here. And it looks like the follow-up from the links are going to be not enough to clean up the belt. He's uh, even getting one or two uh, drone kills right here. Not being very, very successful for us coming out of Blade right there. And that very being very, very annoying to deal with right now. So, Blade keeping himself in this game, you know, consistent pass. And that's what you need to do off of, you know, when you go off a 2k pressure. And then coming out for that extra gateway right here. And he does have DTs and trademark Blade. Saying that he loves to go. He loves those DTs. He loves his DTs. He looks like he's getting plus two. Of what it looks like, which means these DTs do 46 once that's done. Meals will be going to the main base here, but will be uh, sadly, um, sadly meter and we can come into four photon cannons, but uh, we'll see how that's going to play out. Archon, they do have two Archons though, so it's going to make very annoying for Meals to really do too much. We'll be trying to find down the Archon here. Now, will it do. Will it take it down? Oh, Storm doing a lot of damage. Storming part of the uh, Zelda right there, but definitely getting off a nice shot right there, which is definitely going to will the Meatle Flock be a lot less, you know, weaker, you know, it's going to be in one, uh, one or two Archon shots to really d kill off those Meatles here, but, you know, being active with the units, though, is that something Brazoa is, Br Brazoa is doing very, very well, I have to say. Brazoa is, you know, being active with his units, which, you know, if you have these Meatles, you know, even if they're hard, hard, hard cans all over the place, you know, it can't hurt to go and try to poke in, you know, you know, getting vital scouting information, at, if not anything, so... And he's just trying to do as much as he can right here. I mean, Mutalists aren't really going to do too much in this stage of the game here when, you know, our are going to be out, his cans are going to be out, Storm's off. So, we'll be trying to come in here, uh, but going to be losing a lot of those Mutalists there. I don't agree going into them, uh, that uh, mineral line here, but what have you. Uh, Zerg looks like he's going to be taking a fourth base up here. Nope, that is not a drone, so I take that back. Uh, and Blade's still consistently off a two base here. Wants to be taking a third fairly shortly here. Getting double Robo, actually. Very interesting. I uh, Maybe high Zell account, I mean a high Reaver account, but I don't really know what's the point of the double robo, uh, or just a misclick here, but uh, for, uh, these three, three Meatles are going to be a little bit annoying, but the Archon should be able to push his back right now, uh, only three Archon, right, uh, three Meatles right there, and very, very low on HP in general, so those are going to have to fly back to the main base right now, and very good, I mean, I think this is a good saturation, I think it might be a little oversaturated on the natural right here, the main base 
is looking very, very good here. And you know what the difference I'm seeing from Brazil here? He's definitely a more heavy drone person. You know, a lot of Zerks lately are cutting back those drone production, you know, significantly here. I mean, this tends to be what the saturation of a Zerg base looks like in Land League. And Lurkers are out, though, being a little bit more creative in this, in this engagement right here. But Lurkers are definitely going to go for Don't push up the plant here. And we'll ultimately push Play back here with this uh, with this uh, Metal Tribune Force right here. And Archon right there. Has plus two. So he's trying to get Denai's for third for as long as possible here. And buy time for Brazil to try to take a fourth base whenever that's coming up. Looks like coming up here at the uh, 10 o'clock position. So Lurkers are going to be a little bit annoying to deal with here. Now, I still am interested in what the double robo is for. Storm is going down on... Not even a single look here. Coming out from Utilis in this process here. But, you know, Brazil is coming back in the front door here. And does Blade have anything to do with this? He does have, you know, not even enough for one Storm here. And he's going to need to really do something about it. Um, as he's continuing to do this, he doesn't have Observatory. Did he just start it? Where is his Observatory? You know, he has double robo. He should be producing... I'm not sure if he really has double robo, so get down two of uh, two observers, but he will be able to kill off both of these uh, lurkers and get up his fourth, his third base here. You know, flowing very high in mineral count right here. Probably could just put down, you know, at least a significant amount of uh, oh, if he gets behind the mineral line. Uh, things are not looking good for Brazil right now. I mean, uh, for Blade right here. Getting these lurkers in the main base right here is kind of crucial right here, and just making Blade just losing. I mean, a substantial amount of his macro potential right here. You guys can even see right there. 3k mineral stock piled up right there, and even getting the observer sniper right there, which is going to you know, stall that for that much longer, but thankfully it's one more observer coming up right now, and which will ultimately be able to kill off that uh, looker, but very effective, very being very annoying with, um, positioning very, very active with his units, which, uh, you know, very nice to see from the zone, which they really need to do against Protoss, and allowing them to get up their fourth base without getting really punished for it, because what can, what can Blade do? Leave the base? Yeah, not really, because... He's gonna be. He's. He, there's gonna be lurkers in this base, and he's all this. He needs all those um units at his main base here. We're seeing a 111 supply, to 106. So uh, you know, same around same army composition. But where is the main army of Blade here? It's gonna be completely out of, caught out of position. And Brazil's gonna be pushing up the, uh, off the third expansion here, and gonna be kind of really annoying to break through here. And the lurkers gonna have a very very fun time on this ramp right here. And these archons will go down fairly quickly as the lurkers do their full damage on those things. It's 20 damage per hit on those. So when you have about three of those stock piled up, they do six damage per wave, and I mean, these guys do have a, be a decent amount of HP, but keep in mind that uh, they do do the uh, splash damage around that, so it doesn't only hit one Archon, it's both, so. Uh, plus two Carapace for the for the Zerg units, and uh, that's really definitely, you know, kicking in right now, I I'd have to say, you know, you know, in the in the end result there, I mean, he's... Uh, he's Lurkers are going to be surviving that much longer, and you know, very going very, very good for that Carapace upgrade, and that's really going to help. And we'll be picking up the cross map right here. We'll be killing off these lurkers right here. And yeah, it looks like he's gonna be a blade's gonna be pushing back Brazil for the time being right here. But Brazil, look at that army. I mean, it's just 124 supply to 122. So about even compositions here, but I think there's gonna be more than enough for Brazil to really engage this right there. He's gonna be in a big open area. He's gonna be able to storm down fairly effectively here. He only gets enough for even another storm here. He's gonna be able to push in here with all the lurkers. High Templar is gonna get sniped out very, very shortly. Nice storm going down. Not really storm down really that effectively. Brazil, Brazil is still gonna be able to push up with the rest of the lurkers here. And uh, that's all she wrote. Uh, what are we seeing the fall from Blade here? Blade has gone off of six gates right now. Um, not producing out of many of them, and yet he's still, you know, macroing. He's not really macroing efficiently here. And Blade would be looking in a very much stronger position if he had a higher gateway count, if he had, you know, even maybe better upgrades. I mean, his gas is fairly low for like, consistently throughout the game. But, you know, you know, the main bulk of this army is pretty much hard countered by Zealots, keep in mind. I mean, with the with that speed upgrade done, they really ripped through Zeal uh, with Hydra. And not only does that push them back from the Dragoons, it also pushes back the Lurkers because... You know, Zealots are pretty beefy units, and they're able to just go in there and do as much DPS as they want. They still get damage from the Lurkers, allowing Dragoons to nearly do whatever they want. And, you know, more specifically, allowing the uh, High Templar to just roam free and do whatever the heck they want to do. Now, of course, we're going to be seeing more Photon Cannons. That is a lot of Photon Cannons coming up from Blade's base here. But, I mean, look at this. We're seeing Brazil taking out his fifth and sixth base right here. Looking very, very strong right here. Going to be continuing the macro fairly efficiently here. 170 APM to about 131. So they're seeing, seeing around a 40 average supply, 40 average um, APM difference here. But consistent at like 140, consistent at 170 here. But look at the minimap presence of 
through the door here. Just absolutely just beautiful play. And, you know, really kind of just showing the dominance of Zerg in this map, in this game. It's not his matchup, but... And here we go. We're going to be seeing Grizzle. We're going to be going for it. Will there be enough Night Storm going down? Killing off. Uh, get on the Lurkers here. And Night Storm's going down, which is definitely enough of a Blade in the in the long run here. Hydra's going to be coming in here, killing off a High Templar, which is definitely not a situation where Blade wants to be in. All, all the High Templars are completely, uh, completely sniped off right there. Now, and that was a very high-tech use that you know, Blade does not want to miss up here. And the rest of Hydra should be able to get claimed up here. Um, and Lurgis will have to push back for the time being here as he's setting up a container on the third. But, you know, breaking through this A cannon defense is going to be somewhat moderately difficult. Uh, and it looks like he's going to be, he's found this base right next to his and we'll be just denying this, this hatch right here. Now, not really, he's really doing too much, just, you know, just securing a further lead for himself right here. There's really no need not to take any more experience. He has the map control he needs. I mean, he's even taking, I believe, more bases. DT is being a little bit inactive, though. I like to see, you know, a little bit more active DT play. Um, it just, you know, even potentially killing off, like, you know, workers here and there would be definitely very effective with the DTs right there. That's still being a little pretty annoying right there. Got three kills, though, so. Queens! Huh. Ooh, he might even just brutaling shot. Did he get... Huh. I, you know, I, you rarely see this in any matchup. You rarely ever see Queens. Um, you know, mainly you get clean for the broodling shot, um, but the problem is they take a lot of energy, they require 150 for each broodling shot, and if you guys didn't know, if you guys are just tuning into, you know, Brood War and you're just trying to learn the game a little bit more, broodling shot is a, is a, a spell, is a, is a cast move right there, where it can kill, it, it one shots any unit, um, besides psionic units, which pretty much means Archon, um, in one hit, which makes two broodling, so very effective against tanks, uh, but very, very, you know, gas heavy, very, very, you know, micro intensive right here, but while I'm talking about that, Blade's gonna be pushing up to the, to the uh, 10 o'clock here, will there be enough to three seconds right here, and it looks like the base is gonna be going down right here, and Brozo is so advancing, and what is, what are we going to be seeing coming out of Brozo here? Brozo is going to be bringing over his Queens, uh, but does he have enough for Broodling Shot? He needs about 30, every 20 more seconds to get through his Broodling Shots off on the High Templar right there. Um, but then he may just lose them, and he's just going to storm the Queens right now. But at least his benefit to that, though, is he gets this the same thing at Broodling Shot as this perfect Warp Storm here. Well, Hydra coming in, so he doesn't, he just wastes one of the storms, so Hydra going to be very okay against his army right here. Even come morphing the lurkers in here, and you guys are wondering, this is actually helping a lot because what that's allowing you to do is keep in mind, uh, eggs do have 10 armor, so what the cells have to do pretty much is they have to go around that, you know, setting up a nice little wall, very nice micro trick. And if he wants to, he can cancel lurkers or he can just keep them, so it doesn't really matter which way he wants to go. But I mean, either way, it's gonna be very, very effective. More cells are gonna be coming in their way over here. Zell, I mean, lurkers are exposed here, but they should be able to instantly borrow and should be just okay to do anything they'd like to. Now, is he going to show, you know, the Brutal Shot that doesn't have it researched? Um, I think it would be kind of silly to go use it on these units here. He's pretty much using it on the High Templar. And that's pretty much the whole reason why he got that. Ooh, getting a webbing, um, and snare, actually. I wonder what's all, what's all, what's up about that? I mean, most of the time, Zerg's retreating, not Protoss. But Protoss is, you know, Blade's not doing terrible. He's getting up his fourth base here, you know, spending a little bit more on cannons, but, you know, that's really all I can do. I mean, we see a very good, strong map presence of Brazoa here, you know, losing that natural, losing... He still has this base operational here, not the best saturation. Very... a lot of idle drones, and Brazoa's late game is not looking nearly as strong as his, you know, you know, his mid... you know, into the mid-game mid here, and, um... getting Defiler Tech out right about now, so... what are we gonna be seeing here? I mean, we're probably gonna be seeing Plague we're gonna be seeing Ultralis, which are just popping out right now, and... What are we saying? 123 supply to 162. So, and it looks like it's going to be going across the map here. We'll be going off a couple of just stranded uh, lurkers here, here, and there. Killing off a couple of overlords, which will actually supply block for Zoe here. And it's going to be going down to that third, that uh, that base over there. And it looks like we'll be able to clean uh, clean up house right here. Um, Jackson right here, we need to see a big engagement from the army of Brazil right here, but the problem is he's just sending half of the army against this, the whole protest army here, and not really being proven very effective. I wonder where those queens are. I mean, the problem that we're seeing from Brazil right now is that he's kind of spread thin. Brazil, I feel like, you know, since he has 5-3 up, 5, oh, well, almost 5-3 upgrades, but 5-2 upgrades on his ultras, I feel like if he just gasps his fourth, he, he can just totally just dominate a blade here and this game. Nice ensnare going down. That was a lot of ensnare, actually. 
and that's definitely going to slow it down, maybe getting around for more worker checks, but you don't, you rarely see in snare in general. Now, I'm trying to figure out the whole logical reasoning behind this, I mean, they don't even show the UI on the High Templar, look how slow they're moving. Dun, 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 oh, it's gone. Uh, I'm not really sure what the point in snare was for that reason, didn't really follow it up with any kind of aggression, uh, any kind of attack. So what, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting, I mean, we need to see some kind of follow-up, but we're not seeing that. We're seeing very idle Bruce over here, and I don't really know what, exactly what he's doing here, I hear fire firing somewhere. Oh, Dark Storm up on the third here, so he's going to be able to break through his hands right here, which is going to be a nice picture, taking off one of the two mining bases of the blade here, and how effective will this be, what will be the follow-up here? Now, we'll be seeing a big protest army coming down. Yeah, it looks like he should be able to clean that up with the rest of the zones here. Um, this is a lot of four kills, five kills. Looks being very effective with the 2 upgrade right there. Storming the extra one, just finally killing it off right there. But, I mean, it's still, you know, solid six base zero to a four base Protoss. So, it's going to be kind of hard to, I mean... The main, the one thing Brazil is going to have a little bit difficulty is, other than the fact that he's not maintaining his army right now, is that the fact of the matter that he needs to get, we, you know, it's going to be hard to break this protest army. I mean, that's like, what, six Archon, five Archon, going across the map with one, three upgrades. I mean, that's pretty powerful. They are doing, I believe, like, 39 damage. Yeah, 30. It's going to say 36, but yeah. And... We're seeing a very defensive position from Brozoe here, which I don't think needs to be the scenario here. As long as he doesn't keep, you know, random control groups in the center of the map doing absolutely nothing. Like he's doing with his ultras right now, and like retreating back, he's just not doing anything. And I, I mean, Dark Storm is going to be going down here, and finally will this be... He's going to be under the Dark Storm, so... And I'm not quite sure if you realize that Plague is probably the better option against this, just because they do get this insane amount of damage. And keep in mind, though, I mean, if, if Dark Storm is going to be an issue for Blade here, you can always re-tech switch, or tech switch down to Reaver Tech. I mean, very, 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 very short. He already has two Robos, so if that's going to be an area of concern, we're definitely going to see able Blade just to be able to go right through that with no problem. And, I mean, what are we seeing on the main base here? We're seeing a couple more Ultra Lists coming out here. 163 Supply to 169 Supply to 135. So, actually, Blade still, you know, Consistently having the same army supply, but somehow I don't really know how that's possible. Seeing a fifth base coming down for Blade right now, and I mean we need to see some aggressional attack from Brazil right here. I mean I don't really understand why he's not really doing anything. It it reminds me of just like of like a glitched replay. Like I remember one time I was I was doing this epic game, and then all of a sudden the replay bugged out. And what happened was it was actually on Fighting Spirit here, and the Terran never made over 50 supply, and the Zerg only made over 75 supply. And it was the funniest thing, because it went on for 50 minutes, and the game just suddenly just, we just saw, suddenly just saw GG. It was the most quirky thing here, but we're going to see Dark Storm coming down right here. I mean, the Lord is so spread out, though. I mean, Dark Storm really aren't going to be that well, well spread out. Effective here, but I'm just, both players are just not being very active with their units here, and it's really hard to... If wash it, I mean, at this point in time, it's been like what at least a 26 minute game, and neither player's really done anything. Really, no, no harass has been done. We see a little engagement here and there. We've seen a very passive Zerg, and not to say that I like to say Brewer's boring, but I mean, this is tough. This is tough to cast, ladies and gentlemen, because. To be completely honest, not the player's really doing anything. You know, that stalemate right here. I mean, one supply to 184. Well, I know Zerg's ahead. Way too bunkered in. Way too defensive. Just attack. Like, that's all he has to He's off of, like, what? One hatchery? Two. Three, four. Five, six. Seven. Eight hatcheries. He can remax pretty quickly with this amount of stockpile uh, stuff right here. And, you know, maybe, you know, maybe the issue is that he's droning too much. You know, I mean, pretty good saturation on the base here. Does he need that saturation? Maybe, maybe not. But, uh, yeah, finally we're seeing engagement from Brozoa here. Gonna be just poking again. Just engage. Make this game somewhat more castable. Please, castable is now a verb. Yes, it has been confirmed, but... Oh, he did dark sword. Uh, he did that uh, brutal shot though. That finally, are, are starting to finally utilize 
that uh, to that queen here. I, I'm believing both these players are probably like D rank, just because like the length of this game is absolutely ridiculous. But that's okay. Now we're gonna be seeing. Ooh, I mean, I mean, just like look at it, like passive, like four. I want to see like the control groups of this guy. Like, what's he doing here? Brazil is down to 140 APM. So I mean, we're even seeing a significant APM di uh, differ difference from you know earlier in the game here. We'll be sending in that dark swarm going down, but oh, uh, he just wasted all of his dark swarm on one area. You can tell that by the thickness of the cloud, but you know, gonna be very hard to, to to deal with. And you know, one reinforcement, re more reinforcing units are gonna come here in snares to get out of there, but. What, what's the point? We're seeing Mass Queen from Brazoa here. Um, this is the most quirky game of DBT. I mean, DBT I've ever seen. I am sorry. Zelda going to be trying to make their way in here. Also, it's just dying. I can't wait to tell under the cloud as it's too dark. But I hear a lot of zealots chopping away with their, like, whatever noise of metallic swords pressing against something. Um... DTRS was going down, did snipe off a hatchery though, I didn't even pay attention though, as I'm so out of this game right now, as I'm so actually, like, detached from this game, I just can't say it, but we're actually going to be moving over to the 12 o'clock position, we'll be borrowing here, I don't see this much doing too much, and there's just so much Archon, and the lurkers are instantly dying, throwing away units, not the best thing for Brazoa, Brazoa's re expanding to the top left, probably got DT harassed as well, didn't really pay attention to that, Links are being coming away to the bottom right to see if what they can do, I hear a drop, Coming in inbound, we are seeing a small drop, but that is so many cannons, Blade. And I have a feeling Blade might just come back. Like, honestly speaking, like, Blade is in the scenario where he's just like, you know what, bro? I'm gonna go, you know, put down a cannon. You can't do shit about it. I know you're passive. And I'm gonna go DT your F your late game and make this game go on and make Fitz cast it for way too long. And that is what I'm feeling like right now, but, um, what have you. Now, I'm trying to figure out what is actually going on here. Are we seeing any kind of... Well, we set the drop coming over here. Um, actually, like, literally no movement on the map. I mean, we're seeing a couple of things moving here and there. We're seeing long-distance mining happening. We're seeing drop apparently happened in the main base right there, which I didn't see. Of course, he did play new buildings, which I was actually staring at the mini-map and trying to figure out what was going on, but we did see a, a miniature drop around two Overlord's worth, I believe. Uh, not really doing too much, though. I mean, killing a, I mean, hitting a couple of the production facilities, making them bleed blue flame, but really not going to be doing too much. Ooh, nice play, Goo, going down over there, though, and, uh, play, Goo, I mean, uh, Storm's going down, not really doing too much. Stopping up the Looker, the Hydra count for sure right now, and throwing away more Hydra. What is both players doing right now? Like, what is actually happening? Finally attacking. Okay. Dark Swarm going down in. We'll be consuming. We'll be getting any more Dark Swarms over here. He does have around three storms. Uh, going in this attack is not going to be out. That is a lot of storms. Ow, ow, ow. Even morphing the, um, <laughs> the Archon going down. You know, I'm not sure if you realize it, but that is an Artosis Pylon. Like, for at least, like, the first, like, four cannons. He, did you even see that? He just left the Ultralisk and just chilling there. He's getting Scourge to consume. Is this a troll game? Ladies and gentlemen, I feel like this is a troll game. I mean, gotta be going down here. We'll be storming some. I'm only kidding. I mean, it's pretty weird. Late game is very, very difficult. Uh, High Temple are getting killed off right here, but I mean, Blade is looking very strong here with this 1 3 upgrade. Blade is starting to get mined out. Bronze of Brazil is still off of 2 base, 3 base. Uh oh. Finally starting to break through this, this, this fifth base over here. I mean, he'll do a good amount of damage on here, but I mean, Dark Swarming over an Archon. With Hydralisk guys, like that is not a smart, that is not a smart move right there. Like I'm just gonna let you know straight up, that is not a smart engagement. Uh, we'll be continuing to uh, reinforce this attack right here, and looks like that arc, that <laughs> that the Ultralisk doesn't matter how good your armor is, will eventually fall down to the Archon as they do do 39 damage. And these guys have a total of six armor, so whatever the actual attack um, from the opponent will be, it actually would be 
would minus by six. So Zealot would be doing 60 damage. And gonna be going finally gonna be trying to clear out this base here, but this so uh, Hydra is still being very effective, but now Blade looks like he's starting to be slowly retreating out of this game. Um, I mean the map presence of him is slowly deteriorating and we're seeing more and more uh, finally we're starting to see a little more, you know, map presence coming out of Brazoa here for sure, and I'm killing off the rest of the simulator here. And ultimately going to do fairly effective, I mean it's very interesting to watch, like, Queen. Like, they really haven't done a whole lot. We've seen drops, we've seen Scourge, we've... I think we've seen every single unit out of the Zerg Tech Tree in this game. Serving some odd purpose. We've seen Plague, we've seen Dark Worm, we've seen... We've seen Broodling, we've seen Burrow, we've seen... I think we've seen every single ability. Besides Infested Command Center. Which would be awesome, ladies and gentlemen. If you have a Clan League rep, that someone did that, I'd be the happiest person on earth because that, my friends and ladies and gents, would be a very, very fun time. But yeah, it looks like Blade will be reaching back to the north part of his base right here. We'll be just regathering up his forces here, which, which is what I, I feel like Bronze Brazua should have done a long time ago. I mean, still have. I mean, like all he needs to do is make a joint attack, attack, and kill off the reinforced Blade. Finally, just end the game right outright and just win. But we did see a setter. A Slayer base. You see me coming out of out of Brazil right here, but we'll be countered. This is why you never see this in uh, Fighting Spirit. But actually, it's the first time I've seen it in um, in um, Fighting Spirit that actually someone took it. Um, now, will it? Now, the main question is, will it be able to start saturating? That will be the question here. The scenario is actually being, you know, fairly effective of retreating forces, but I'm not sure if it's quite effective to be like gas and take it takes to get up that, that attack, but we'll see how it's going to be going. A lot of Hydra going to engage in this attack right here. So I got my camera going all low, all haywire, and still really not enough. So I mean, these Hydra are trying to micro, but not really doing too good of a job here. And Hydra getting cleaned up here. Um, what we need to see, I feel like from Brazil right now, is lift up these lurkers, engage with them. Yes. Saturation in the center base, ladies and gentlemen. Saturation. Oh my goodness. And that base is going to No, my dream has never come true. It's never been true. Um, Queen is going to ensnare. Ensnaring his own unit, so not really doing too much in that own regard. Blades are restricted to one mining base, which is nearly mined out. Uh, Brozoa won this game, but by the skin of his teeth, in my opinion, because neither player has shown any adept skill for the late game, which has made it very interesting to watch, because um, neither player has really shown late game potential. I mean, we've seen drops here, like small drops. We've seen you know, the play goo up here. We saw engagements, but not really, you know, high storm dodging. We've seen high tempo running on the middle of the open, not doing anything. Um, but, I mean, snares going down. I mean, very interestingly stuff, but like stuff you wouldn't normally see in a regular brutal match. So, um, it's 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 hard it's hard to somewhat watch, but at the same time interesting. Um, I know I sound like I'm not very interested in the match, but I actually am. I'm just like, I'm just I'm actually just trying to ponder like what to talk about because. You know, I'm used to standard brood war matches. I'm stand I'm used to seeing standard build orders. I mean here we're seeing very quirky like like who goes queen in any matchup. That's not like super gosu and awesome with their queens for any some special random purpose. But I mean we saw a standard opening come on a blade, so I mean it's a very interesting way to deal with high templar. I really still not been able to deal with it as there's been storms all over the place. Like this would be a perfect time to, this would be a perfect time to go brutally shot those high templars. But, he just continued to ensnare, which would be fine if he was winning engagements, but he's not. So, in that regard, like, these ensnares have been moderately worthless because, I mean, sure, yeah, it slows him down. Okay, great, but the problem is you can't kill him. You can't. You could kill much faster if you just if you use your energy instead on a snare, brutaling shot the high templar, and kill him off. I don't know the exact range of brutaling shot, but 
I will probably tell you is that they, it's probably semi-decent range and you can probably get in there and kill off the high temple are fairly effective. As the computers when I played in Brood War, they'd always brood and shot my worker lion that was annoyed by it. And queens are gonna be like, yo, I'm gonna chill out here, but now we're gonna see Brazil attacking the front door and Blade will finally fall apart because he was my note. And there's no G. But uh, sadly, Blade is the DT master himself, which I'm really not sure if you could call him that, but he does like to go DT. Uh, but we did see a very interesting game. We saw a 37 minute uh, PVZ. And if you just look at the like, resources here, I mean, look at, I mean, like, that should have been enough to literally just go kill off Blade, in my opinion, like, super quickly. But that didn't happen. So. I won't say much about it, but I thought, yeah, potentially could have been a better scenario. But I mean, that's my opinion, of course. Now, again, I, you know, Clan League, you get the games that aren't super great. Sometimes you get really awesome games. Sometimes you get a random player that's super awesome, and then a player that's really not so good. Um, you know, you get those games in Clan League, and I just want to, you know, share that with you guys. You know, if you guys are just watching for Brood or for Brood War, then yeah, that's a great. This is a great time to be here. If you're not, if you're looking for high-level games, sometimes you get them, sometimes you really don't. I really, I'm not really told exactly what we get, but yeah. Now, on to your next game here, which actually means I'm sorry, I did, I did actually change the overlay, which means we did see a 2-0 coming from Salvation Army, and I'm gonna quickly get grab a piece of paper real quick because that is what I do, and that's what I'm gonna go quickly write down because that's what I'm gonna do, and yeah, really have no other work for it, but yeah, we'll go write this this. Is crazy scores down and um, yeah. So the next team will be a two v two between Salvation Army and Black Dragons. So with that in mind, um, I need to get my casting gear up in motion. I need to be more awake. I need to know exactly what's going on in that two v two because that's gonna be awesome. So let's just quickly write down these players here. It's gonna be Blade versus versus Brozoa. Bro, B R. -O. Z O Z A, which is two O two um zero two. So now we're gonna have the two v two. Two v two between the players, and let's go see this. Not between these guys, but uh, oopsie, that's not right. But okay, we'll be going up to the two x two. Uh, first map will be on Col Colosseum, which I don't actually know this map. So let's go talk about this map. Because I actually need to you know get my familiarizing self up with this awesome map here. So why don't we just go to my awesome browser? Because that's what we do. We go into Colossium. I'm sure I call upon Wikipedia. Now let's see here. Food Colosseum. Colosseum. -um. Okay, so actually not a map. Very simple. Um. Pretty simple map, actually. Uh, very, very standard four bases. You have a quick um, reverse ramp to your uh, natural, but isn't really exposed to, um, per se, early game aggression. Um, what you could do, theoretically, is you know, put up proxy barracks here, but it's a 2v2, so it'll be interesting how it's going to play there. Most like other 2v2 maps, I mean, if it's cross positions, most likely we're going to be seeing whoever rushes first. Um, allies, we're probably seeing a little bit later timing push, but otherwise, uh, we'll see how this is going to play out. Um, so we're gonna go jump right into this game, ladies and gents, because uh, that's what we do at uh, Clan League. So I'll get right into this, and um, that was the map. If you just wondering, so spawning in the top left will be Black Dragon's Car Crew Four Fish Crash Crash me, Crash, and then sp or bottom left is gonna be, in the, um, is gonna be Black Dragon's Crash. Spawning in the bottom right, it'll be Black Dragon's Hexa. He's made a reappearance again. And as the uh, as the orange protoss spawning in the top right, it'll be the white white zerg um, salvation army's prozoic um, zolic. It sounds familiar actually. And yeti um, salvation army's yeti. So we're just gonna go change it up a little bit. Sorry, I have to change up the um, change up the um, overlay. S a yeti. The yeti or yeti. Yet he, yet he. Yeah. It'll be blue because uh, that's a very cool color. Blue. 
In fact, it's way too dark. And it's on the top right. It will be SA. All right, and on the left we have Crash. Sorry guys, I do apologize that Sega wants to actually do this. Crash. Blade. I'm gonna be the awesomely awesome color Hexa. Be the Hexa orange. And you guys get crash. He's he's black giant crash. So now, um, so we're gonna look like we're we seeing a standard ooh, actually gas deal coming from um uh, Yeti. So Yeti's gonna get the gas deal, which is gonna refrain him to go mass link, which in 2v2 is a very, very good thing. Because what that allows you to do in 2v2 is allows the opposite team to know exactly how how to react. I mean, this re pretty much restricts the Zerg to go pretty much ultra ling, um, or delayed meatless. So, I mean, either way, you're it's a win-win for your team. Because either A, you know exactly what they're going, or B, you're gonna be so pro But uh Frozoic is gonna be getting in the run by from Hexa. Which is gonna wreak havoc. Um, if as long, I mean, the zealots can need to get by the mineral line here. The problem is, I mean, that means the rest of his tech is is gonna be exposed, and his gate was gonna be exposed right here. But we'll see how it's gonna play out. I mean, I'll just be target finding the nexus, just being super annoying. Well, what's what is um the APM coming from zealot here? Not super high, so. Uh, probably will be sacrificing some bit of macro potential from that as well. More additional links coming from uh, Crush here to go help reinforce here. Uh, not really doing too much with these links here, but just getting more scouting information here. So, what are we seeing up? Protoss Zerg versus Protoss Zerg. Huh. Very interesting. I'm not really used to. I'm just used to, I'm used to seeing Zerg Terran versus Z Zerg Terran. Uh, Zerg Terran versus Protoss Terran. Uh, Protoss Zerg. So, I'll be a legend. 2v2s are a very, very fun thing to cast, but we're seeing Crush being going in here, trying to just help out his teammate of Hexa, just to finish off with that, and this link should be getting away for, for Zolok here. Zolok's gonna be going for, looks like a speed link opening as well, as he hasn't started saturating that uh, gas quite yet. Does not even enough for the, um, not even enough for Lair or speed links so will be just now what we're what uh, yeti's going yeti's going for a three three gate zealot i guess um so pretty much like just mass zealot pretty much off of one base um uh so pretty it's just a we're seeing a joint attack coming from uh, salvation army did not win this sorry because that's what i do that's what the cool guys do it is really hot in my room ladies and gents and yeah, this is actually a very, very strong coming from Crush, uh, from uh, Crush and uh, from Texa here. Now those Suns are gonna be in the back, so May and we're gonna see everyone's attacking at once now. And now we're gonna see Yeti gonna help reinforce this. Oh, but they may just turn around and go for for Yeti's base here, which is completely exposed. Uh, nope, no, I take it back. Nope. Um. Now, are we seeing gas? Nope, not. Be still continue link production from uh, Crush right here. Uh, Hexa is going for any kind of tech. Nope, still no tech, still no tech, and no tech. And pretty much ma makes it nearly impossible for, for uh, you know, pros to actually go and mine any kind of gas. Because, um, look, like, it's going to go around here, up and around, up and around, up and around. That's not too good. But, and then we're seeing a nice concave, or a nice size, uh, you know, how do you say, uh, contain coming out of, uh, Hexa right here on, on, uh, Prozoic right here. So, but we're, we're seeing a link, we'll be making the way across the, uh, time here, but we're seeing a nice, uh, I guess another, like, concave, if you could say, for Yeti here at the same time. 
So both players are a little bit of you know, mass tier 1 units for 2v2, so, I mean, like, mass Ling versus mass Zealot versus mass Ling versus mass Zealot, again, uh, was the final thing Tech coming out of, out of Hexa, though. So Hexa, I mean, knows 2v2, uh, always getting in the mineral line, and that might just, uh, that's still going to get a lot of pro kills, though. Uh, that's just really going to put the hurt on the end right there. And that's got to be the game changing thing there. I mean, you know, small but surely going to be able to, you know, get a victory on this and going to be able to do a lot, very good job on it. So, as Zelda, you trying to move in here. That is a lot of Zelda. By the sick thing in Marksville, but oh, we might just get that versus being at least around here. But we're going to have a reinforcement coming from Crash here. Will be enough. That's just a lot of stuff on screen, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot cast what exactly is going on, but you can see what is exactly happening on screen here. A lot of people in blood. A lot of Zealots just melting with their blue flames of death, but it looks like Fresh and Hexa are going to be able to see them way they're through here. Maybe able to get the macro hatch. I don't think they're going to be able to get the the, the sun into the back, but maybe they will. Drone is going to be pushing up the line. We'll have to draw away, and this might be all she wrote for for Prozoic at least, and maybe just um. Salvation Army in general here, they will be trying to push up here, but it looks like Yeti, Yeti will just come in time for the aid. But, I mean, at what cost has that done? I mean, a lot of economic damage has been dealt, a lot of... Well, well, actually, actually I guess I killed a lot more pros, so... Um, but yeah, now we're going to be a counter push coming from Yeti here. Yeti, um, we will be seeing two photo cans on the high ground, though. Four... Hexa here, so you'll be more than an optimal situation to deal with this. At least with Zelda, as long as he can hold that off, I mean, he'll be more than fine. But, um, yeah, he doesn't, you know, this, um, this might just be enough. Um, oh, he didn't wall off, and now here's a counter push. And here come a lot more length coming from Crash right here. Are we seeing any additional tech coming out of Yeti here? We see a forge and nothing else. Uh, no side report. But uh, that's a lot of zealots that's going to be in the mineral line here. We're trying to see Stargate tech actually coming out of Hexa right here. Interesting why he'd be trying to go that kind of sort of tech right here. But anyway, he will be trying to, uh, with things, trying to kill off these, um, get these, you know, zealots here. But, you know, one, one zealot to one sibling ratio in, on an engagement is never an awful position for our third to be in. And it's going to be start by another next here. And now we're kind of seeing a flip here. We saw the super aggression of some coming from Black Dragon onto uh, Pro Zelic's base here, but it really didn't take actually that much economic damage at all. And then we saw a counter flush coming from uh, um, Salvation Army here. Gonna be killing off the Nexus there. And that is gonna actually be game, I feel like, at least for Hexa, because he can't produce a Nexus here. There's no way he can do anything. All they can do is just go all in. And I guess it's probably the best thing they can do. Probably make two more Zelics, and that's gonna be. Oh, uh, it's going to be a desperation attempt for, for Black Dragons, if, if that's to say the least here. But we're going to be seeing an expand coming out of out of um, Yeti here. And Yeti's going to be more more than fine. You know, Zealot right here, you know, to be able to wall that area off. We're going to see, you know, maybe Crash has map control for the time being here. We're going to be seeing, looks like, you know, Pro Hexa may have more map control than he does because he just has a lot of probes. And we're going to be seeing, you know, Inspire coming up eventually speaking here. And, you know, what 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 is Crash limited on? Link Zerglings. I mean, I mean, getting out a third macro hatch off of one base. I mean, there's literally nothing you can do here. But he'll be trying to make a desperation attempt, like I've been saying though. Maybe able to, t at best, be able to like cripple Prozolic here. But I think there's gonna be too much stuff, too much reinforcements coming from Yeti. Exactly, ex that's exactly what's happening here. But we'll be going for it anyway. We'll be able to do enough damage. Uh, Probably gonna be trying to drill their way in the mineral line here, but at the same time, we're seeing Corzola uh, drill at his own right. We haven't seen Crescent Zergling trying to take out the second one second has going down so far, but losing a lot of link in the process right here. Looks like he might be, just might be able to get the last sunken down. He will be able to get it. And it looks like Crescent and Hex is actually doing a big number on the mineral line here. But like I said, at best, it cripples Corzola here. He's gonna be okay. And, I mean, he still has the probes out there, and yeah, this probe got. This, this desperation attack did fail utterly, and we'll have to GG out, or some other language GG. Which I don't know what that language is, but. Brood War has. It's versatile in the amount of languages we share, and more lanes coming from Crush here, but really not going to be able to do too much, and, I mean, he's off of trying to produce as many lanes as possible, but. Um, I mean, what can what can we do? I mean, we saw Hexa pretty much eliminated. We saw, you know, Prozola tried, you know, being attacked twice. Still has drones, still mining strong, still has actually tech. Spire was killed. 
but or did maybe a spire much of that spire up there but you know doesn't have the tech that he needs but I mean in that own right I mean we're gonna see a two base Yeti versus a one base one base crash crash is going ultra ling all he needs to go is storm slash archon and it's game because ultra ling oh, sucks balls against ultra ling and yet he's going dragoon so unless yeti manages to fuck up super bad i don't feel like this could actually ever swing back into black dragon's favor but that being said there are star card games that can be like that Corsair is out though. Could be actually annoying though, but. Oh, wait. Is he mining? No. I don't think it's possible, but. <laughs> um, but he does have one Corsair up, so he can actually do some damage. Uh, but that will become a spore colony very, very shortly. Um, no, it's not gonna actually. But he's just trying to search for overlords here, but where are. Our Prozoic overlords. Overlords are one overlord. He only has two, so. Ultra Ling is going to be going in here by going into a meat grinder of Cannon and Dragoon and Zealot. And you guys can just see the carnage. I don't even need to see that. There's the GG by Black Dragons and Ultimate. It did have to go. So, um, that being said, that means yes, um, Salvation Army did get 1 0 so far. Uh, we'll see if there's gonna be if uh, Black Dragon will be able to come back uh, an ace match, or if this is just gonna be, you know, all she wrote. As I, like I've been saying, I was trying to click on exploit to press end game. But yeah, very interesting game though. Um, you know, a little very interesting. Um, I wish I was actually able to go more on the openers because they're openers and they're kind of interesting in their own right, especially if you're trying to learn about Chibi Chibi Brood War. But oftentimes, I mean, we saw a super fast speeding opening, very aggressive. Is there? into Ultra Ling, into potential whatever. Pretty much what we saw. And then we saw, you know, masses that were coming out of it. A pretty basic 2v2. Not, not what you normally see. But uh, maybe low league just rushing outright. Um, but oddly enough, though, it wasn't cross position. So you didn't see whoever rushed first, in my opinion. But that's just my own analysis. So let's go on our next game here, ladies and gents. Because that's what we do. Um, go to ground. And that will be Fighting Spirit. So you guys should know this map. I won't have to go into it that much, I hope. But yeah, we'll be going to game number two between the series, between you know, week number five, between Black Dragons and Salvation Army. And let's get into this, ladies and gentlemen, because of that. that's what we do. So spawning in the top right on Fighting Spirit will be Black Dragons. Hexa will be the Purple Protoss. Spawning in the top right, I'll oh, top, no, top right, so in the, spawning in the top left will be um, Salvation Army's Yeti. And one in the bottom left, it will be Black Dragon uh, Crash as the Orange Zerg, and then finally will be the or the red the red Zerg um, Salvation Army's Prozoic. So now cross positions, like I've been saying in the last cast, pretty much whoever bum rushes first probably wins because cross positions fighting spirits a ginormous map. And yeah, so let's go change up these colors. Crash is now actually orange, so. Thankfully, though, it's actually much, much easier to go in and edit these now than it was, you know, prior to actually go edit all the names here. Yeah, that's a better orange color, in my opinion. And red is going to be Prozoic. Because that's what we do. And hi for anyone who's tuning in to Awesome iCup TV. And be Hexa. Or Black Dragon, if you guys And purple. Purple, 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 purple. And Shield's gonna be Yeti. I really wish I had my own person like doing this while I'm casting, but I don't actually know how to make this easier than what it, what it is. But yep. Okay. So now we get all the colors. Now you know everyone's you know locations. That I didn't put the races in, but you know deal with it. Um. And oh, that's bothering me. That's bothering me. Okay, but, okay, so what are we seeing again? We might be seeing a two gate. Um, now, Protoss can go for a tech path, which is oftentimes with a forge first, or maybe gateway forge, but still off the one base anyway. New, in 2v2, you rarely ever take an expand because you get punished for it way too easily. Because now, you not only, not only you have to defend one person like you do in a 1v1 to take an FE, 
but now you have two armies attacking you, which is oftentimes very difficult, but we will be seeing a, a two gate coming out of Hexa, and he, I guess he knows what to do in cross positions, because, you know, pretty much over bum rushes again, and the reason for that, and we're also doing the same thing coming out uh, out of Yeti here, uh, and we're seeing uh, pool even before, uh, gas before pool, I guess, and we'll be just going for the fastest layer possible. Um, and we're going to see Mass Link coming out, out of Crash. So Crash is going to be going for more of a Mass Link style. Prozoic is going to be going for Mutalus. So if that goes into it, um, if, he, if we can see Prozoic get a good, a, a handy handy amount of uh, Mutalus, he's going to be in an okay scenario where he's going to be able to pretty much just go through any anti-air defenses in, in Crash's base and just pretty much take him out. So you have to be wary of that when you're doing that ZVZ. Because what oftentimes in 2v2, what happens is... It's like its own ZVZ parts of the time, and then something's like your own PvP in its own right. Like a lot of mirror matchups, and it's kind of fun to watch, but you know, that's, that's how it goes down. But like I said, like, you know, you don't drone up in ZVZ. You don't. I mean, you'll drone up in like, ZV, ZVP, ZVT, but I mean, in this regard, you're going to be just bum rushing anyway. I mean, so it's how that works anyway. But well, everyone's going for like super aggressive things here. Um, actually, maybe I was incorrect on what I was uh, analyzing. I mean, he gave the signs of going for uh, for that uh, layer timing. But um, now, Pro so Prozo has a decent amount of links here. Uh, more uh, units coming from pressure. His speed is about two thirds of the way down right here. Um, Yeti's is actually—I mean, uh, Prozo is actually going to be a little bit faster than his. So actually. Prozoic is actually handled a two, uh, like, two armies at once. So, I feel like Black James may have just lost right now, right now. He's starting to lose pool, and it's now leaving Crush to really defend here. And, you know, Prozoic is, is dealt one army. He, I'm sure he's more than capable of dealing two armies. So, um, um, I mean, yeah, there's going to be too many zealots here coming out of Yeti here. He's just going to kill that pool. And... I was thinking, well, I mean, that's something that's not coming to the range of the pool. And yeah, I mean, Zelda's going to be able to get in there. Yeah, might actually lose his. Uh, pool does not go down, but fairly weak on his P. All he has to do is go for round number two, and he's going to be able to do the same build coming out of Getty from as last game. Same build, yeah, coming out of uh, Hexa as well. So it looks like you might be seeing that starport opening that, that we saw from him last game. Uh, reason for it is just to probably stop Needless. Um, probably the best bet to go is Dragoon. But um, depending on your play style, of course. I mean, you, either or, I think, is probably a more than fine justification. But now we will be seeing hexes that's coming in here one more time. We'll be targeting down the sun right there. And uh, we'll be targeting the sun again. It will go down. But I don't. Yeah, he's not going to be able to go in there. There's, there's one sunken with a too many link right there. I uh, will just putting down another sunken right there. And. I definitely Black Dragons is going to be in a little bit of a, a bit of a, an issue right here, but I don't know. I mean, I think it's I think it's stabilized for the time being. We're seeing another joint attack coming from Black Dragons and um, Black Dragons, but um, versus versus Prozoic here. Prozoic's going to be trying to drill with this SCD. I don't know. Just going to be just evacuating them as fast as possible. Um, so we're taking a little hits from those zealots right here. Now, what is the reaction coming from? Yeti here. Yeti has... Yeti is where? Has Yeti been teching this entire time? No, no, he's over here killing out, starting to kill off the Nexus. I'm sorry. I did, I was, I knew when I was in the supply count, there's no way he has that 40 probes off of one base. That's just not possible. And he's just gonna go for it, and then we saw a repeat from last game. We just saw Yeti go in there and be like, yo, dude, I'm gonna kill off your Nexus. It's a lot faster, but... Yeah, pretty much. And now we're seeing. Ooh, but we can see though. Hexa can actually make another Nexus. So he's not out of this game right now. And Zlings are going to be making back to uh, Crush's base right now, of what it looks right now. And both. Neither. They look like a base. Doesn't that look like a base on the minimap? I feel like it looks like a base. Doesn't it look like a base? In a very odd location, but it could have been base. Uh, Zerbling run by coming from Crush right here. We'll be able to do enough damage here. Taking a lot of hits from the initial zealots here. And double target coming out of, out of Yeti. So I guess this is just standard Protoss Zerg versus Protoss Zerg stuff. As I've never seen double stargate opening, but, um... 
Yeah, I mean, the Surreal's gonna be super annoying to deal with, and Crash is might be able to get Black Dragon in this game again. I got one, one pro kill with that, indeed. Um, okay, it's starting to rebuild his Nexus, so, you know, at the same time, you know, you know, Hex is not out of this game quite yet, but it's gotta be difficult to come back from. Oh no! That means Prozola completely eliminated. I didn't even see that. Why am I so bad? But yeah, I was trying to watch it run by. But yeah, and, uh, good, good, good work. Anyone want a one v one? I don't know why he sent it to me. Why is it sent to me? Why is it sent to me? Oh, but will Yeti be okay? He has tech that. Oh, he's not gonna be prepared. He's gonna lose the Nexus again, and he can't do anything about it. Oh, that's terrible. That's so well done from Prozoic here, you know. And that's one of the issues for not completely eliminating him. Why is he not gonna? And he didn't kill the Nexus quite yet. But. Wait, what? What? Why isn't he eliminated? Ah, there's the gas. That's why. That's why I was wondering. I was like, why? Because in one of you lose all the buildings, uh, you're eliminated. So you, you can't even watch the game. You, you, they're like, no, you cannot watch game. You are done. You are you are dead, my friend. You are done. Um, And now we're going to see a joint attack coming from Prozoic and... Oh, no. Prozoic and Hex are coming at the same time right here. I don't believe he's going to be able to get the Nexus Snipe, but now what are we going to be seeing out of Black Dragons? Crash is going to be bringing... Ooh, Corsair are coming up from Yeti. Um, oh my goodness. Yeti's taking some casualties. Uh, I'm trying to go for Yeti's base here, but... Oh. Oh, I thought, I thought there was another thing. It's so hard to differentiate these players right now. I'm so confused. But yeah, Corsair 4 Yeti are going to be coming back over here to do whatever they want, I believe. He can just go right up here and just kill off the rest of these overlords. I mean, we are seeing Hydra coming out of Cat Crash right here. This is a weird composition 2v2. Uh, but it can work. I mean, it's, Hydra aren't good. I mean, I mean, if, if, you, if you just isolate the left side of the map here, I mean, you can pretty much see that it's going to be its own... PVZ. I mean, that's what I mean. That's what I've been saying. Like, you can actually see its own right, and we're even seeing Forge, you know, robotics facility. We're seeing like standard stuff here. Now, I mean, of course, when Hexa gets back at this game a little bit more, when he feels gets when he stabilizes a little bit more, of course, he is going to be in, in not such a terrible position. But you know, you have to keep in mind that it's going to be a little bit harder to come back. From. Is my game just. I thought I thought the game was frozen for a second because like like the stat, the frames were uh, frozen for a second. Now, wait. Oh, I thought he was mining. Ah, uh, man. Now, heck, Yeti. Ooh, no, that's that's uh, Prozo's mm, Overlord. Oh, did find one of the Overlords coming from Crash right here. We'll be able to snipe that off right there, and that will supply block him at 34 supply. So, like, just like in a, a, a PVZ, is the thing what's happening right now. Um. Of course, they're making the way across the map right here. Now, what's going to be happening over here? Uh, seeing so, you know, another uh, extractor. Sorry, coming down now. Hexa is just trying to stabilize more gateway units. Now, what we're seeing from Yeti is getting a two base. Now, this is going to be the interesting part here. Look at the tech advantage compared to both players here. Coming from Black Dragons. Black Dragons, you know, has both players, of course. But the worrisome thing is now, will the now will the potential of the higher tech help? You know. Uh, Salvation Army come back and win 104 supply. They're trying to be douchebags and kill off, you know, Prozoic's um, extractor. It's not like even Prozoic can do anything. It's like, yeah, I got an overload. Yeah, I can just chill. Just chill over here. Yeah, I, I can do that. No big deal. I have a drone. I can make an extractor over here because I'm cool. But active Corsair, 63 supply, 34 to 38. So. You know, in a way, you know, Yeti is not out of this game quite yet. I mean, about even supply. I mean, has like a semi, you know, tech-ish army getting up a natural. 
and that's going to help out. But at the same time, we're going to be seeing a pretty decently sized force. Keep in mind, one or two storms can end that, but, I mean, does have a pretty decent sized force over the natural. So, I mean, ooh, he didn't get any DT. Oh, okay. That's going to be close. I was going to say, if he didn't have cans at his front door, DTs would do a lot of damage. I'll keep an eye on that DT harass in the meantime, but it looks like he'll be frightened away for the time being here. We should be seeing Templar Archive with Storm coming up right now. I mean, this is actually like standard timing for Storm. I mean, like 20 seconds delayed, but I mean, somehow it's like a standard, standard 1v1, but it's such a weird 2v2. Ooh, he doesn't have mobile detection, and he's gonna be able to stop any kind of aggression coming from Hex that needs to wait for that Robo facility to come out, and he's just not gonna have the resources right now to do it. He d he honestly does not have the tech. He's gonna just start putting that down. Um, or he was. I mean, he had 200 minerals for it um, and 200 gas right now, so I'm surprised why he didn't, but it's gonna be quite some time for mobile detection from other player. I mean, okay, we're seeing movement speed for Overlord, so that's gonna be good, but I mean, keep in mind that's his Corsair, so that's gonna be hard to break through. This is like... So like a 1v1, it's just so bizarre. We, we, you know, like, these last games, I've honestly been the weirdest Brood matches ever. I mean, we saw two, we saw Blade versus Brozoa, you know, game number two. Brozoa won, but I mean, neither player really had a late game, you know, like, didn't know how to really do a late game ZVP. I mean, neither player was very active. I mean, Blade held off with a lot of cannons, but I mean, to pretty much prolong the game for like 38 minutes, but in his own right, neither player did that. Now we're seeing a, a 2v2. I mean, the first 2v2 was pretty legit. Now we're seeing a 2v2 that's ended with Prozoa pretty much being eliminated all but an extractor and a drone. And we're seeing Yeti have superior attack, getting Storm, containing with 1DT, which I believe has been negated now. No, no Robo yet, but has an Overlord. So that DT was fended off for the time being. We're going to be seeing Kresh pushing out slightly with his Hydro Force. Is can still supply locked, 48 supply over 43. And we're seeing 106. So this army is pretty devastating. Um, will be enough. I mean, Storm. Will it be ready? Will Storm be ready? It will be ready, ladies and gentlemen. Gonna have to come down the storms. He has cans. He's gonna be defensive, but that's a lot of stuff. That's gonna be a lot of storms. But he has more than enough high tempo, I believe, to do so. We'll see how it's gonna be going down. Will the storms be going down? Storm part of his own army. Nice storm over the bridge right there. We'll be pushing back those hydro. Four hydro have died so far. High tempo are low exposed to be here, and Zell's gonna be cleaning up on the south side of the ramp right now. Now, yeah, it looks like Camille like cleaning up house. No problem right here. And it looks like Black Dragon's gonna struggle to take out. The superior tech a Yeti here, and I mean, it's kind of worked out in some way. I mean, if we were going to see Black Dragons come out, it would have been that aggression, that would have been that attack early on. But you know, Yeti was you know, so active with his force there, and able to kill off you know a majority of the Overlords, not allowing to, not allowing Crush to really get a high enough Hydra Force to feel comfortable to push out with with Hexa. And at the same time, I mean, and Crush was that was that behind, so you really had to wait for for Hexa to be. To, to really get his uh, macro back up, and you know, he had continued had to produce Dragoon because of consistent aggression coming from Yeti here. Yeti just played this perfectly. Storm was going down, killing off one of that, but um, yeah, he's gonna be able to just go way through here. He doesn't have plus one quite yet, or yeah, it's so, about, you know, 90% done. He's gonna be able to just push right through here, but we're gonna see Yeti. Yeah, Yeti's gonna be able to break through these. Dragoon's no problem, I and mean, he has shot, he has speed lot, so he's gonna be totally fine to be able to clean up high. I mean, Zealots alone counter this and counter Dragoon. So, um, we need to see something kind of unit switch, but composition switch, but what can they do? Mutalisks um, might be an option, but I mean, we're taking a third base here. We're taking, you know, a third base. Uh, the drone seems to be killed off. Now, taking out a new uh, hatchery so you can be able to saturate the third gas sooner or later. And the joint attack coming to Black Dragons will be enough to break down the front door. These three cans are exposed, but look at the amount of Zealots turning back in with plus one. With their newly found blades, with their new side blades being dominant. And you know, Leo pushed, uh, I believe it's pushed back with proper storms, but he doesn't have high Templar out at the time being. He doesn't have enough for two storms right now. And uh, this third, dude, yes, they do know about that, but will this give enough time for... You know, Yeti to get in, you know, stabilize and get down a storm on this, but it looks like the Hydra will be able to get in with the eye, kill off his third. 
Uh, very active uh, victory for Black Dragon, allowing for both of them to actually get up their own tech pass. Very bizarre game, but we need to see some kind of aggressive move coming from Yeti here. He has an, a very, very advantageous uh, position here. Has the tech before the tech coming out of, uh, um, before a crush or hexa. He needs to do something so I'm not really doing too much here. And he's going to be able to, I believe, he's going to be able to attack either or of these players. And maybe get a win, but... Again, this has been such a bizarre TV too. I really can't know what to say about it anymore. But uh, actually, uh, the Black Dragon is getting this good concave right now. It's going down fairly effectively. But there's so many cells just you know gnawing away, side side blading them to death. A nice dragoon micro, but will it be enough? I mean, Hydra gonna come here. I don't think it will be enough. There's just too many cells. And look at that, even like six more coming off right now. We're seeing off of. What? I mean, eight gate, no, six gate, no, eight gates, yeah, eight gates, no, two gates. And he, all he has to do is mash Zilla, and pretty much he counters. I mean, of course, we might be seeing more attack uh, coming from, you know, Hexa. We're seeing DTs now. He's gonna have to fart OBS out, but does he even have Observer Tech out? He does have Observer Tech out. He just has to, you know, bring it out right now. We'll be doing a tight wall off, I believe. Nope, nope. Where are those DTs at? DTs are out. Plus one to plus one. So, I mean, both, you know, Black Dragons, the longer they're putting out this aggression, the longer they're allowing themselves to stabilize. But will it be enough? I mean, he's, he, we're seeing Yeti off of three base now. Now will, you mean Zerg, look at the saturation of both bases here. Not so good. Finally starting to get the, um, the main base, you know, far, starting to get fully saturated. Zerg getting a third base here. Uh, but will it work? Uh, that's the question, and I, I, I honestly can't tell you. I, I, this is such a very interesting 2v2 that I can't, I can't begin to what to know what both players are really gonna be really wanting to go for. It's gonna, it's, it has to depend on solely what Yeti does. Does he sit back and macro? Does he let both players, ma like, take a third, exactly what Crush is doing right now? Or does he do a timing push where he's going to be able to uh, kill off one of the other ones and with his advantageous, advantageous position here, will he be able to win? I mean, of course, a three-base protest will be a three-base Zerg, and by itself at least, and then a three-base protest will be a two-base protest by the end of the day anyway, especially one that's been delayed so far. So, I mean, I'm not going to count out Yeti here, but things are looking kind of grim for the bro. I'm, I'm not going to try to be a downer, but I mean, I'm, I'm just honestly telling you the truth right here. I mean... Look at that. Look at it. There's like at least, what, 12 lurkers just morphing outside of this base right here. We've seen 121 supply to 65 and 50. So, I mean, again, about equal. Does he have refruits? No, he's going to be going for a high Templar drop, and that's what he needs to do. That's exactly what he needs to do right here. And that high Templar drop is going to be commencing very, very shortly as this push is growing out right, going out right here. Are getting in a better strategic positioning here. Now, where is that, where is that coming in? Will it be enough in range of the cannon? It looks like it will not. And storm! Oh, the whole man around gets completed, but 11 kills, 4 kills, getting 15 kills with that, and not even losing a single one of the High Templar. Only losing some shot hull damage on that. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely wonderful, and just showing the power of storm drops. But. Zerg, you know, even though, is he starting to, you know, he needs to drone up, I feel like. Crash needs to do some kind of, you know, significantly droning up, and then that will allow him to get a good macro edge and with with Hexa, of course, and hopefully be able to take down Yeti, because Yeti's in a bunkered position right now, and he's just going to occasionally go in and out and just re free kill off all those probes. I mean, he could go in for round number two and do the same thing. Well, actually, no, he can't, because it's Dragoons, but... Dragoons. We are seeing a pretty good contain, you know, coming out of that. And Lurkers do have zero upgrades. Our, what's the upgrade count for Protoss? Uh, Yeti does have 1-1 one, one so far. Uh, both players are kind of stalemates right now. No, neither. Oh, he did a DT harass out the south position right there. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, and DTs are good for a reason. And that's the exact reason. Go, sorry, go. Um, is, does, get, does Crush just actually have to go after this epic game? By the way, this isn't live, ladies and gentlemen. This is, I guess this is not a replay, but, um, I hope he doesn't have to go, because I, I want to know how this game works. I want to know how it ends out, you know? I, it's going to be so 
Uh, Lurkers are going to be coming in here. I don't know why they're rallied in there. And you're going to lose one. And you're just going to go for it. Running into Lurker line. Good. Oh, nice. Hydra dodge it. Or Storm Dodge. 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 Now Yeti's looking a little, little not so good. I mean, two, oh, two, two is just kicked in. Another base is kicked in. Um, fourth, third base is finally coming up for a crash right here. Crash is probably off of still two base. Um, what do we see? Ooh, did kill off that. Oh, he's gonna flank around. Beautiful, beautiful storming, storming, storming high Templar. But oh, that guy is enough for like three storms right there. Oh, that's gonna be why would you lose the high Templar? He doesn't even care. He's just gonna go for it. He's gonna go for the kill on Hexa right now, and that's exactly what he needs to be doing here. Gonna be doing a defensive storm right here. Uh, not, I mean, storming a process army is good, but I mean, just gonna kill it off. Uh, there goes second from no, no one does the job right here. But uh, what's the reaction? Two black giant. Will they retreat or will they go in for it? These these lurkers could just go in potentially and do some damage, but there are oh, that's a lot of storms actually. Um, so, you know, I, I believe Yeti's done the right choice and just go for it, but has he done enough damage? He's taken out the natural, which now means he has the long distance mine, and he cannot build another Nexus for the time being right now. He would have to launch from his natural right here, and I think Yeti's going to be in too good a position to do anything. We need to see a push coming from, from Crush right here, and he's not doing it, storming up his army, but at what cost? I mean, what are we going to think? You know, 127 survived to 56. Gonna be, he's gonna have all the army back over here, and he's gonna be okay. He's gonna. He, he, we need to see though. Crash, go for it. Um, that's the only logical way I can do it. I mean, what a terrible day for for Hexa right now. He's been killed off like at least three times so far today, and he's just gonna. He doesn't even care anymore. The yeah, he's like, you know what? I just killed off the whole base. I'm gonna go in for it again because I have round number two in here. He's gonna be throwing off the lurkers here. He doesn't even care. I don't think he even has an off though. I don't I don't think he even has an observer. Is he making one? I hope he is. No, he's not. I don't oh no, there's the off though. Like, ah, uh, where's his off? You look sir? Um, would have been good to harass. Harass the third, maybe. Would have been opening back here, but uh, didn't actually utilize it. And um Lurkers are dying now, because the are good. Um and now since Hexa is pretty much dead, not mining, uh, he's long distance mining, so, but he's not going to have any of that because he has, you know, forces down there. Uh, nope. And, uh, this is so terrible. This is absolutely, there's such a crazy 2v2 that ended up with Prozoic limited to a reactor, extractor and overlord. Um, and... This is kind of creepy shooting. He has 20, he's 20, he's 27 APM right now. And Prince Oak's at 3-3, so, um, keeping that in mind, I mean, Crash is off 4 base now, but really off of, all oh, and off of 3 mining ones. Not really fully saturating either. And Hexa's losing his main army, so he's going to be out of this game completely. Oh, no, I didn't even see this base right here. Didn't see that base, so Hexa's not out of this yet, but... His tag is gone. His tag is gone, gone, gone. We'll be storming that uh, that army down and more reinforcing the uh, Dragoons will be able to clean up a 0 0 Hydra. Which I think is like the deciding factor in this game. You mean, I mean, you can, you, you can equal army with Yeti. Yeti has more bases than you to begin with. But, so there's actually a couple things. I mean, Yeti not only has has the same size army as both these players, but he has full, full control over it, so he doesn't even have to, he doesn't have to communicate with anyone. He has, you know, so that allows him to build up a better, if his macro is good, allows him to get more units out. At that same time, it allows him to, and I lost my train bomb. I was going to get into some, like, deep analytical thing. Oh, and also the upgrades. I mean, the upgrades count is going to be consistent through all of his units here versus, like, what, the 1-1? One, one? Yeah, the plus 1 for Hexa right there. Guys, me obs. Oh. Absolutely crazy. More lanes coming from Crush right here. Not a bad decision with the Hydra Goon count here, but I think it's too little too late. Ah, uh, this, yeah, this is too much stuff. Too much stuff from both players right here, and we'll be able to just, uh, I, this is absolutely not too good. Black Dragons is out of this game, I feel like, unless Crush can really do some kind of 
the Sonic Factor, but he doesn't have any upgrades coming up, so... No, just starting to post my melee, so... Yeah, he needs, he's just starting to get Hive. Um, so we're gonna see a PvC for a while, but... That Nexus is gone. That Nexus is gone, gone. And again, he doesn't have enough to build another Nexus, so... Not too good. Um, he could try to actually long... He could try mining with this. Uh, with this... With these, uh, forces right here, but I'm not sure it's gonna be uh, great enough. But, uh, yeah, these links are gonna be making their way... Across the map, doing their own account, their own crazy shenanigans, but yeah. And and I can see what my friends are exactly doing. Thank you for social media making me know everything what my friends is doing. Ah, uh, that's a lot of sunken DTs up there. You could be starting to slice away if you'd like to. And. Uh, the killing blow is about to be arrived, ladies and gentlemen. Yeti is going to be able to secure a 2-0 theory for, for um, Salvation Army, in my opinion. But I believe you guys would say the same thing with 3-3-3. Three, three, three. I think he's even getting shield upgrades. Yeah, he's even getting shield upgrades. Like, that's just like... That's just like... That's just a killer. And, and the, that's like a nail in the coffin right there. Stormy Z versus something. I, I don't know. I do not speak that English. GG by Crash. Finally, Black Dragons quits after the two, like the 30-minute view game, and that is absolutely crazy shenanigan right there. And that means we see what did we saw? We saw 2-0 from Bronzoa. So that means actually we saw another 0-2 to uh, to Salvation Army, proving to be very very effective in the series. So so far 2-0. So. Going, going to uh, Salvation Army for sure, and um, yeah, fun game anyway. But um, that was a crazy. If you guys are just tuning in, when the vods come out on YouTube, go watch that two v two. I am like dumbfounded on how that worked. Half an hour two v two. If you have the time, if you have the time to like, or just put on music and listen, or just don't even listen to my cast. Just watch that game because it is crazy. That game is absolutely, absolutely shenanigans through the roof. Um, how it's been one player got eliminated and then the other guy came back. It's oh, it's crazy. But um, yeah, so we're gonna go on the next series right now. So let's figure this out. Mm, do, 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 do. We're gonna do oh, we're gonna do J M versus Yeti. Yep. Yeah. So okay, Aztecs gonna be the first map. So it's gonna be a tri spawn map. I'll talk. I'll talk about the map pretty quickly. Um, try. It's going to be GM. I'll, I'll write the player's name later. Okay, so... I want to talk about this map. Aztec's a pretty interesting map, I think. Um, there is a pretty big rush, in, depending on the scenario, if you spawn on. If you spawn at the 12 o'clock and if you spawn at the 5 o'clock, there can be a pretty long rush. In, so I wouldn't recommend going for a super aggressive style. But we'll see how this is going to happen, of course. I'm just stalling for time while I'm changing up the overlay. So I can figure out what I'll be talking about at the beginning of the cast. I don't sound like a retard and trying to change the overlay at the same time, trying to make some random story up. But, um, yeah. So Black Dragon versus Salva Salvation, Salvation Army. Because they're cool like that. Salvation Army, and this is going to be, I want to say... Ah! Oh man, I'm, I'm talking Chinese right now. I don't want to do that. Such whisper to MVP lock. Cast it. Um, I, I love how it's like every time I log in. Like I only I only log in to iCup to literally cast. That's all I do. Um, clan league. Clan league. Um, okay, so this is not. This is gonna be. Oh, I forgot. The, I forgot the guy's name. So, just shut the game. Oh, I didn't even write to him. Alright, so anyway, so spawning at the 12 o'clock position on Aztec, it will be Black Dragon's JM, and then it will be the Green Protoss. And then spawning at the 9 o'clock position, it will be, um, Selfish Tommy's Yeti. That's what the guy's name is. Yeti. So, it will be the, so I believe it will be a PvP, so that will be very interesting. So we could see one of two things from either player here now. 
Positioning on this map is going to be a little bit different than normal. Um, like I was saying earlier, it can be a longer rush distance, but because of their spawns, it's going to be a little bit different, and I got the color. Uh, this is going to be JM. JM screen, so I apologize. JM. JM's going to be green. It's a nice, that's a solid green color right there. I love it. Green. I kind of like the Yeti green as well. What do you, what do you guys think? Do you like the uh, yellow green or the, that other green? All right, but anyway, I uh, like I was saying the PVP can go in either way because of the distances between the maps right here. Um, it isn't nearly as long as what this is to the enemy base. Like that, that positioning is absolutely ridiculously long. So the distance can be a little bit more rush oriented on this map with these current spawn locations. Normally two base timing pushes normally come out on this map. So what I'd expect is we could see a two gate opening from both players here. And also there's a reverse ramp so sometimes you'll see people put their buildings on the high ground. But I'd, I'd expect two gate um, both, by both players but I could be wrong. Um, the two gate, the second gate should be coming up fairly shortly for either player. No, but we're seeing gas opening for JM. Now, what is Yeti going to be going? Is he going to be going for that style? No, it looks like he's going to be going for a two gate. So, um, two gate versus this. Um, it can work out to the two gate's favor because what can happen is if the two gate fails or doesn't do whatever its purpose is, you, you still have these two gateways, right? Then you, you still have zealots, if, as long as you don't lose all your zealots. What, what you can do is you can, ooh, Mander Power actually, I believe, going down. Um, but what you can do is you can later tech into three gate or four gate uh, speed zealot very fast. You can even get plus one with it if you wanted. And you can wreck like regular three gate Dragoon pressure in, in PvP, which is oftentimes actually good. And then if that actually continues to work, you can even just start you know, tech switching to DTs really quick. Now, that's more of a cheesy alternative uh, PvP when I've seen it work um, quite often actually when it is utilized but you know there is good reason because sometimes you can kite zealots you know all day but I'd assume we're seeing that three gate uh, pressure uh, or somewhat because he's getting his cybercore up fairly fast I want to see he's going for some we'll see some tech we'll see some tech but the, the fact that's what what he decides to do with that tech it, it really depends on what he wants to go I mean I, I'm going to assume from regular meta Brood War, it's going to be a 2 or 3 gate Dragoon pressure into either expand or all in, whatever, what have you. But, uh, yeah. So, nice little micro, actually. You, you can get in a couple more hits off that. Ooh, actually, a lot more hits than Yeti would probably want to. Now, Yeti's a 2v2 player. If you guys are just tuning into this cast, um, he was the one that actually came back when his partner was killed off in the 2v2. So, he knows what to do. So, um, if anything, he's a very high... He knows what to do in a certain scenario. That's probably what I would tag him with. JM, I feel like I've casted him once or twice, but uh, no super known characteristics. Probe just get, getting out of there with 1 HP, putting out a random pylon that's not going to do anything. Oh, he's going to can him. Is he? Oh, he's going to can himself in, man. That's the douchebag strat right there. That is like douche douchebag of the day kind of quota stuff. Like, that is douchey. Um, and I'll be interested in what he's going to follow up with because he's going to put the yeah, he's going to put down a cannon right there. So he three thousand, three thousand. He's going to have a bit of concave actually. Um, and this is one of the problems of not like, putting your base out on the high ground um, because you're more susceptible to this being, you know, Walden, and what, even when the Dragoon's trying to push out there, it's pretty, pretty much hard, but you know, JM may just lose straight up to the two gate pressure. Um, he's like, uh, well, actually, why is Yeti like that? Oh, a lot of probes are coming out right here. I'm trying to cannon himself in. He needs to put the cannon at all costs, though. So that's, that's kind of saving grace here, but actually losing... Yeti just lost all the drones. I mean, all the drones. All the zealots here. And he continues to put down a a cannon, which is concerning. We'll just cancel it. That cannon's dead. That cannon is actually dead. So what you should have seen there is not super good control coming out of JM for sure. And we'll oh, we we'll, should be able to at least kill off the pylon in the main base here. I mean I guess he's gotta try to reinforce it, but now the dragoons are out. What we should see the follow-up is either Citadel or just going back into regular Dragoon tech. It depends on what he wants to do. Like I was saying earlier, you can get that Citadel and get off a four, 
four. I mean, that's all in off of one base, but it can work. And then you can always start switching to, you know, try to come be more stabilized into more of a, you know, you know, natural expansion. But we'll see. We'll we'll see how it's yeah, how it's going to go down. I mean, I can't, you know, pretty much. But you know, Dragoon are very good against Ken. So Kenning in your opponent in, D in PvP isn't the greatest time, but uh, he's doing a fairly effective job. The cannon still has the shield still right. It's finally starting to break through the shield right there, and that cannon will eventually go down after, well, after the cost of losing two Dragoons for one Dragoon. Um, is he going to continue to reinforce his... Oh, he's going to put down more cannons? Yep. No more cannons coming down. So, he's really committing to this. He's going to be expanding behind this. So, interesting. I mean, going down the forge. So, I mean, getting yeah, definitely comes some cheesy, cheesy shenanigans going down. Um, we'll be trying to get the probes in there so it takes up the uh, fire from the Dragoon, but we'll be just hard to find on the probe anyway, uh, for the thing right here. And JM is losing a lot of probes from that engagement anyway, so, and two more cannons are going to go off. So, in that regard, um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like, I was going to write something, but I didn't want to. Uh, I mean, uh, go away, you know what I know I can do? Uh, now I won't get his status updates for Brutal which I really don't care about. He, he, he's MVP from Walk, so it's okay. But yeah, getting the Cyber Core up, uh, getting, um, getting, um, range. So he's gonna be okay. And he's getting a blood expansion, so the longer he's gonna be able to do this, but there is a window where, well, first off, he's going Reaver Drop. Yeah, he's going Reaver Drop. Which could ultimately just spiral back into Jam's favor. Because oftentimes you, when you're doing this super aggression style, I mean, you're even put, you're even investing cannons. You're like hoping that they're like, oh well, I'm gonna go push up the front door. Except good players don't realize, like, well, I can just put down Reaver Drop and just kill every mineral line because you have nothing out there. Because keep in mind, he's gonna be rallying his dudes all the way over there, so and even getting up from what gate. Um, he's gonna get up his robo facility, but it's probably gonna be a little too late. Um, in my opinion, um, is he even getting, you know, he's not even getting shuttle speed, so, but, um, even gonna be getting, a uh, third base of what it looks like, or pylon blocking, and I'm not, I, I, I can never tell, like, the, like, the, like, the positioning on this actually is, I can never actually tell, but, but yeah, this can rush his spins moderately successful, but, I mean, the one thing Yeti has to watch out for is definitely the, the re drop that just loaded up, so, where is it? Uh, no, no, he, no, he's just going completely, yeah, I don't know how well Yeti's going to be able to defend this. Yeti's in a little, I mean, he's, what is, uh, well, he's three gates, so he might be okay. He has two, two Dragoons of his own. He, how much is this, four, six Dragoons compared to three, and he'll have five with, with probes, maybe? Four when the, the engagement starts, so he'll be moderately. He's, he sees it, so he's gonna be pulling back the drones right here, which should give him time to actually you know, kill off these. Um, that, but he also has a reaver in behind it, so yeah, he's gonna have to pull off probes here. But will JM be able to break through this? I guess gonna come down like the micro of both these players, you know. Looks like Yeti is going to win as JM is gonna be retreating. I'm getting a little more uh, shots from that engagement here. We'll have the reaver support though. Uh, which, oh, does connect those, which actually will pretty much ch change the, the tur turn the tide of this battle, and, yeah. You know, two more Dragoons, and it's up to four gateways right now. Going to put down two more, uh, more uh, going up to five gate. Um, and JM needs to do some kind of miracle right now. Because his aggression didn't work, we're seeing a very, uh, like, now defensive positioning here. We see a nice arc, now we're seeing that JM not only finally take out the pylon, finally be able to kill off the rest of the, the kids, they're potentially going to be getting his, his natural, uh, natural up, so that's going to be a lot of dreams, though. I mean, Keep in mind, I mean, while James has been, re you know, restrained to this one base, he's been continuously producing Dragoon, so he may have a higher supply count, um, 65 to 57, so actually, no, so it looks like Yeti's uh, macro is actually going to start kicking in right about now, so that's definitely going to help him in this, this mid-game push with, uh, like, a lot of Dragoons, potentially plus one, if he hasn't, no. Didn't quite want to invest, but he probably could have a little bit earlier, but not going to be doing that, and we're going to have Dragoon and Dragoon battles, but, you know, Jam's doing the same thing he did why, why he lose the first thing he did. Now he's retreating and going to be losing those Dragoons, which, you know, if you're going to go engage, go engage. You know, if you if you don't know what's in front of you, go send up a single Dragoon, uh, which a lot of players are struggling with, um, and it's really quick fix to do it. You know, just send out, if you don't know what's going on, 
You know, send a Stimmarine. Go send go send a, a Speedling. Go spend a Dragoon. Go spend a Speed Zealot. You know, those units are expendable. Um, you know, in PvP, you know, Dragoons on Dragoons. So, I mean, you're going to have to maybe... If you don't want to lose, you know, four Dragoons for an engagement, go send a one. You just figure out what's going on. Okay, for which to get your obs and take your obs and stuff. Yeah, that's a lot of your coming out of Yen right here, and, uh, but he does have two Reavers, um, which should prove to be very, very helpful. But one has been picked off right here, and now there's just too much stuff from Yeti right here. Doesn't matter how good that Reaver Micro is, it's just too, too much. And the shuttle's gonna be taken out. I just got off the Reaver, but, um, yeah, he, he uh, Yeti has one engagement, and we see no follow up expansion, so. JM is not looking too, too strong right now. Uh, I, I definitely there's a GG by JM, and Black Dragons did uh, lose game one here, but um, what have you, they, Black Dragons is so far has lost not, is, uh, not too many, has uh, lost way too many games, I think. Um, especially from that game, Black Dragons lost, what, what do we see here? We saw, well, we saw J, what, what do we have here? We have JM versus, I forget the guy's name. Totally forgot the guy's name. JM versus whoever, um, who, which is current right now. We have we had Blade versus Brozoa, which was 0-2, and the 2v2 series went 0-2 again to to um, Salvation Army. So Salvation Army is outplaying Black Dragons pretty substantially in this series so far. But um, yeah, we're going to game number two, guys, and hopefully it's gonna be a good, 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 good game. The next game will be on Tall Cross. Um, PVP on this map. Uh, now I'll go talk about. The, well, it's pretty easy actually for the Salvation Army. We'll we'll go on the map. But Tall Cross is a map where where aggression is going to be favored, and I'll tell you why. Because with the map, you actually your your main base is on the same level, so you know fast expanding is a little ruthless on this map as well as the same on the same ground. So it's really going to be hard to really defend, especially on your main base where you have to expand. So knowing that coming into it, and you know. Knowing that most of them you fast expand on this map anyway, because what's the point of sitting, sitting on one base? Because the aggression can happen. If you guys are wondering why that, why I'm saying that is because you know a lot of maps you don't know, have ramps on them. So you know, you know sometimes it's better to one base because you have the ramps easier to defend. But if you're one basing, they have just as much you know will to go with, break down your front door as you have from the natural. So why not take the natural? So with that mindset, players going into this may have a better advantage. But now, spawning at the 9 o'clock position, or rather the 10 o'clock position, will be Salvation Army's Yeti, who's up 1-0 in this series so far, and could be a very effective 2v2 player. And now spawning at the 12 o'clock, or the, let's say 5 o'clock. <laughs> well, I was supposed to say 6 o'clock, but at the 6 o'clock position, it will be uh, Black Dragon's JM. So JM... Did went for a cyber core opening last game, so we'll see if, we, if we're going to see the same opening from both players again. Um, in PvP, there's m two standard openings, two gate or um, one gate into fast gas, which is often followed up with like robo with what then from with that robo with, with that citadel. No, yeah. With that cyber core, you can go whatever the heck you want. Most of the time, it's followed up by like three gate goon pressure, which I've normally seen, but we'll see. Uh, and now we're going to see the same thing coming out of Yeti here. Um, and also, I've completely changed up these guys' names, uh, colors right here. So, yep, and it looks like JM's going to go for the same thing right here. He's going to be putting down that gas. So, we'll see if he's going to be able to work out this game. Now, what are we going to see the follow-up coming from uh, Yeti here? Yeti's going to be going for for that gas expand as well. So, or get, get, getting the gas, not gas expand. Getting the gas. So, now... Ah, it's gonna be interesting. I mean, it's, now it's gonna be solely dependent on the build order of these players. Here. I mean, like I said, this is gonna be going down a tech-oriented path. Now, depending on that, you can't really tell till what you know. Do they go for an expand behind this? Do they go you know two more gateway bandits? Do they just go straight for Cybercore and then right fight for uh, Robo facility and then go something with like with Reaver Drop or whatever? I mean, it solely depends on what the protest wants to do. Oftentimes, like I've been saying earlier, you know, it comes down to it often comes down to like a three gate or two gate pressure of dragoons because you, you can't like you can't just solely tech up in PvP or else you get like three gated and then you have nothing to defend. I mean even cannons once you have range dragoon up, which I believe both players are getting, or actually no. I mean Cyber Core is coming up for both players right about now. Um or standard PvP times for it, but you know, when that when that range kicks in, I mean, the cans don't nearly do nearly effective against dragoons, and dragoons have a fairly decent amount of HP. And because of the fact that 
like I said, this map is on equal, you know, level, same cliff level. It's, it, you know, attacking a, a cannon front door. It's not going to be nearly as aggressive as it was last game, where we saw Yeti just, you, you know, can't, like, put three or four cannons at the front door. You know, JM tried to circum circumvent that, but I mean, ultimately lost, but, yeah. Getting, uh, getting up that range upgrade as it stands right now as well. For both players, let's look at the timings of those. Just starting for Yeti, I believe a little bit faster. Yeah, a little bit faster for for JM here. JM's going to be poking a little bit with a probe to see what's going on here, but sees results. And ooh, nice micro getting up behind the, the, the north and south part of that probe. Is that a prox spot? No, it's not a prox spot. Um, it runs getting down the second gateway. Uh, now we're gonna be seeing a follow-up. So we're seeing actually one gate. So probably some tech. I'd assume Robo. I'd assume, or even Stargate could be weird, but it could potentially happen. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, you still have one gate. We're just waiting really, really long to put down that extra gateway. I don't know. What Robo? Yeah. Stargate. I don't really know what you could really go in PvP because I mean, what do you have? Scout. I mean, you can't really kill off old lords with it. They have Dragoons out. You could go mass carrier rush, but you're going to be attacked before you get a single carrier off of one base. Not yet alone, if you even get it out, it's going to be like five interceptors on the thing, and it's going to be like eight Dragoons. So that's not a oh, oh, thing. You can go Arbiter, which, I mean, would be kind of crazy um, as a close to your unit. So if you have like three Dragoons and like super fast Arbiter attack, but I believe if you're straight taking Arbiter, it takes around nine minutes. Like just straight up, like you're getting like every building on time. So that probably wouldn't work. So starting is pretty much out of the option for any kind of opener in PvP, in my opinion. I mean, you have Corsair, but what are you going to go? Destruction Web? Like a cannon at their front door that you could easily break down? Um, or the Mineral Line? That's just not going to do anything? So, I mean, the, the, the fleet of Protoss is not going to be that very, very beneficial in PvP. And we'll see Arbiter to the late game. Which you don't normally see, but yeah, like I was saying, we're seeing two gate now with Robo with Shadow. Seeing probably gonna be some support bay coming all the way down here potentially. What do you? I don't crazy, but uh, we're seeing that uh, is a three gate. Yep, three gate is gonna be followed up. Three gate Robo, but he, he on the other hand is not gonna get any support bay of what I understand. But yeah, he's he he won't he won't have enough off of three gates for you. Uh, so this might just outright kill. Yeti, I feel like. Um, he's teching a little too much, so that's gonna leave him a little susceptible, and he doesn't have... I mean, he has shuttles, so I mean, he doesn't even have his support payout, so he's cut production substantially. I mean, keep in mind, he got the second gateway way later than his opponent, so it's gotta come down to whoever can really do that best, but yep, and the engagement's gonna be one of those progress there. It's gonna be five Dragoons to five Dragoons, but with more Dragoons, you know, making their way over there. I mean, you can even see, what, with two more dragoons on their way over here, which it even has, I believe, no, I think it's about equal for the time being here. But the benefit for for JM right now, or for Yeti, too. oh, I mixed up the colors. Ugh. I'm glad I caught that before. Um, but yeah, that was really bad. That was really stupid of me. I apologize. You guys were saying anything, I, I, I do apologize once more. You get the basis premise of what I was saying, pretty much. I mean, Yeti may just straight up lose to this because JM is putting on this aggression again, and um, I think I even said both players. I just I just changed it when I looked at the overlay. I'm like, yeah, Yeti, no. But yeah, JM, and that's an orange color, not a yellow color. Ugh, this is terrible. I'm having such a terrible day. But I got an eight, I got an 80, 88 on my uh, on my awesome chem final, so I'm pretty pretty happy. But yeah. Has a nice concave, so it's gonna be kind of hard to it's gonna be hard for uh, Yeti to break through this. I mean, for JM. But JM is gonna be microing. Um, but where is the reaver support bay? It is done. Is it loading up? It's gonna be loading up two reavers. So, will that work straight up? Um, and it looks like we will ultimately kill those dragoons off. But, hmm, Unga. Mm yeah, we'll be going down the south side here over here, and will it be enough? JM is getting off a of four gate, so he's all into Dragoon production. That, that is essentially all in, and that's what he needs to do. Um, 
probably against this robo robo tech, but it's gonna have to come down to if he can pick off. Oh, he has one behind. He's just giving off a couple hits. That's exactly what he needs to do. Shuttle's very low on HP, but you know, Yeti's steamrolling through JM's army right now, and JM's gonna have a hard time dealing with this pressure. And uh, he's has to get cut out of position here, and he just needs to retreat. He needs to stall for time at best. But now it's just giving at the same time it's giving Yeti the same amount to get up his other reaver, and now he's gonna be expanding behind it. So Yeti's looking in very favorable position right here. He's not gonna front JM, and I feel like this just might be game. I mean, J I mean JM has nothing. I mean, Debbie's trying to reinforce. Oh no, no, do not attack. Go down. Go attack the reinforcements from those behind. You kill off the reaver. You're not gonna be in a terrible position here. Uh, here come reinforcements coming from JM. Will it be enough to break through this? Um. I don't know. It's looking pretty grim right now for, for for JM right now. And that Reaver looks like he will survive. He's going to make his way in the front right now. Uh, it does go down, but, I mean, he needs a miracle. He needs a new way of units, which he just does not have. There's a GG by JM right there, which will conclude this series. 2-0. Uh, um, um, so we did not see any kind of ace match going down, sadly. But, um... You know, we just saw, you know, standard PvP stuff. I mean, I don't... I couldn't really blame it on one person, per se, for that game. Uh, Engage with, probably could... I mean, JM with the 4-gate could have potentially realized, like, well, hey, he's off of one base himself. Um, so either one of two things would happen. Either one, um, he's got to go something crazy, which is probably not going to happen because he, he seems to have a pretty good army at the front door. Number two, a logical reasoning is that he's forgetting himself. A logical conclusion, but you should have been able to compare his armies to your army. Or number three, he's tacking into something. Uh, you know, still producing stuff, obviously, but you can still tack to whatever you want. I mean, like, we, I pretty much concluded that Stargate and PvP would not work, but not to say that is impossible. But, if you get what I'm saying, it's just, th there should have been a logical, you know, thought process behind JM's thinking process with that and ultimately should have been able to really kind of I feel like ultimately figure out what the engagement should have been um also I mean he was retreating so you're also losing units you want to again a lot of people I I mean games that I've seen not I mean, maybe not the the high foreign league or the pros but you know these players what they're doing a lot of times they're sending their army in realizing they can't attack and then pull out but the problem with that is that you, you you lose units on your retreat, so you lose the units, and especially in the mere matchup where these units are so important, and you're pretty much your four gates equaling up what to the three gate is. That's concerning. You need to work at it with players with that. And we saw JM in game one and game two of this. It's just really losing on the retreat, losing two or three dragoons, which really puts you back, especially when you're behind. Um, JM not necessarily behind in this game, but you know, first game of course. But anyway. I think I've pretty much nailed that, nailed that to a coffin or whatever. Um, oh, cool. Battle net's not working great, of course. No, no, that, that was me lagging out because I'm awesome. Right? Oh, I am continuing to lag out. Apologize. I want to make sure my stream's still working. Sorry, I do apologize because some of the stream like, likes to work, sometimes it really doesn't, and it's stupid for not working. I might go off for like half a second. Uh. Okay. I think we stabilized. I think we're good. I haven't cut I haven't completely dropped the, the frame. Um hopefully we get better. Um sorry for the br brief intermission. But that means though Ah uh, it's hard to see Black Dragon is completely getting decimated every game. Uh that's another O2 series. <laughs> Just straight up. Um so right now we're seeing, you know, Salvation Army taking to a uh, 3-0 so far. So that means they won the matchup. So we pretty much can conclude that they have four points so far. Now I hope Black Dragons can come back and make a victory for themselves. You know, one match or two matches. Because if you guys didn't remember, I'm gonna quickly just read this over. If you guys are just wondering, real quick, Clan League works in this format. There's you know, you know X amount, there's X amount of teams. There's three divisions. Blah blah blah. But each in divisions, there's matchups. So in that matchup, each series that we cast, the best of three between players, gets one point over wins that series. Now, say there's four four wins to one. Uh, there's three wins to two two losses. Now, 
it doesn't mean that you have a higher like that means of course the three persons that have the win wins but to make it a little bit more favored to the winner they add one more point to whoever wins the whole series so if it's a three two you know still the losing team gets two points but the winning team gets four points so the minimum team the, the winner team gets a minimum of five points no three four points excuse me so i'm just i'm just trying to clarify any kind of uh, mishaps or that if you were just wondering about the structure of, of our clan league. I know others are different, but I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. Am I basically like really like blown out because of the uh, sunlight outside? I don't mind this. Um, so we're going on to our next thing between Black Dragon Crots. This is answer. Crots, I believe. I think so. And, oh my god, I do not want to write this guy's name. S A S A T T O M A S H. That guy's a really long name. I'm going to go write it before I go on the cast because that's a really long name. But anyway, going to be Aztec again because Aztec's a fun game. And I'm going to go into game because... Oops, it's not game. I want to go quickly change the overlay um, because we now do not have another 2-0 series for Salvation Army. But uh, we will just go change up this, these players' names because... They're kind of long, and this guy, I really don't want to change in-game because it's going to be really, really long. So it's going to be S, comma, A, S, A, dash, under, lower, zero, O, mash, Sato, mash. Hey, look at that name. Like, it's so obscure. Like, whose name is that? And versus Cross. Who knows? Um... Now, of course, this is going to be very, very fun. Now, I'm going to see if we can get Galv the Terran back in the Swedish uh, co cast with me. And the only one on my Skype that's actually on that would actually co cast, but he's been um, avoiding it for quite some time. But anyway. Let's get into this game because this is going to be game number one between, this will be series number four between the Black Dragons and uh, Salvation Army. So, anyway, map will be Aztec. Now, again, spawning at the 12 o'clock position will be the Red Protest Crots. And then spawning at the 9 o'clock, it will be the Orange Zerg uh, Salvation Army's Tomash. I guess is what it is. S-A dash, yeah. Okay. Um, so, let's actually change his name a little bit. Um, but I did mix up the colors, of course. Like I, I, that wasn't even purposeful. But Tomash is going to be orange. But I guess just red and orange like to go together because that's what they like to do. Um, now this map, um, Aztec, great map. I like it. Um, fun games to be played on it. Um, but well, we should get into the actual specifics of the map because this map, this is close by ground because it's not as long as what these spawns are, I believe. It's not as long, because look at that rush distance, versus this one. Well, you, know, you have to come up. Sorry if I'm making you guys dizzy, but coming all the way down and coming down here. So I guess, I mean, the rush distance is definitely, I believe, shorter from these positions, but I could be wrong. Uh, but what I've seen, there's a lot of ground-based rushes happen around these times, so we could be seeing early game pressure. I don't think we will see it. I, what I will know is that we will definitely see a Forge Fast Expand coming out across. Because, well, not to mention standard, but on this map, especially with the reverse ramp, you really want to make sure you do not get, you know, so, you know, the aggressor doesn't get on the, uh, on, the, on the top part of your ramp, so that it really makes that you want to do an FE anyway. I mean, not to mention that, I mean, TV, I mean, PVZ in the, in the current meta, you know, everyone Forge Fast Expands. I mean, not to say it's the only strategy, but I mean, 9 out of 10 times, you're going to see a standard, I mean, at least on ladder, you're going to see a pretty standard TVZ on, I mean, a ZVP. So, look, you're going to be seeing 12 hats right now, probably followed up with Pool. Uh, nothing really out of the ordinary. We might be seeing Mutalisks coming out uh, out of it, but we might be seeing uh, the, the, the Risky third build, which, what's he doing? Um, if you put to like right, I thought he was gonna go take the third of what Tomash was gonna take, uh, of what Cross is gonna take. Um, but maybe just looking for any kind of third, any kind of proxy. Um, but 
I guess not third. Maybe two. Uh, maybe two hash meter. Seems to be actually. Yeah, probably two. Uh, two hash meter. Three hash meter. Probably be the uh, choice of option here. Uh, but it will be going out another one. So maybe taking another third. I just. I. I wouldn't know. It, it seems a little bit more delayed. But I, I don't know the specific timings of the risky third build. No, nope, uh, the risky third build is going out here. I got the risky third build. Um, it means just like three hatch into five hatch, hatch meter. Three hatch something into five hatch meter, or five hatch uh, hydro. So what you do is you put a, you put a macro hatch on your natural and you put a macro hatch down here. But I don't think you can even finish a macro hatch down here because you can't. It's uh, you can't build like all along th uh, this area right here. So you know, depending on how good the Zerg prepares their SimCity, it can 